This is the Andy Citroen Injury Attorney's Friday Night Rivals, presented by Alabama Power. Tonight, the sun sets on the regular season here in high school football in Alabama. Tonight, a big matchup in 6A Region 1. The Blunt Leopards, we saw them last week come across the bay to close out their season of back-to-back -back road games against the Daphne Trojans. Both these teams knowing if they win tonight, they are in the playoffs. Good evening, I'm Jim Cox. My partners, as always, Dan Brennan and Vic Lockett. And it is really simple here tonight, Dan. Win and you're in. Yeah, and it's a region game, obviously. So it's a couple of teams and programs and coaches and cheerleaders, heck, that know each other. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're, they're used to playing against each other. I think we are in with the, what is undoubtedly going to be the game of the week in South Alabama. There is no question about it. And Daphne knows they have to win to get in. Blunt could lose tonight's game and then get some help and still get in. But, of course, Lev Holly says, hey, let's just win and not get any worry about getting help from mm -hmm. anybody else. Boy, uh, Daphne playing well, especially offensively, put 53 on St. Paul's last week, and they've won four in a row, five in the last six, and like so many times, it all funnels through the QB. Yeah, this kid, we saw him a year ago, and it's like night and day, isn't it? Trent yeah. Battle from last year, he was uh, kind of thrust into the uh, starting quarterback position after an injury to the senior last year, but man, he's so much more confident this year. Great production on the ground, in the air, and look at that, 20 touchdowns, one interception. And uh, we've gone over some stats. Daphne's only turned it over four times all year. Yeah, through the year. And, and six total. And, boy, he's, he is a guy. And he's rushed for nine more touchdowns yep. uh, on top of it. So he is a guy that really makes this offense go. But Vic Lockett, we also know he is going to face the best defense I think maybe he's seen all year. We saw it last week. They slowed down Sarah Lynn, And they've got a lot of weapons. The Blunt Leopards giving up only 10 a game. they got a lot of Leopards. Leopard, weapons over there on that side of the ball. They do, and it starts at the back, I think, with uh, our Marty Diamond. Uh, you know, you ask his coach about him, you say, he is a dude. And in football terms, that means he can play football. That's a good thing, isn't that, it? That is a good thing. <laughs> Six foot, 175 pounds. I mean, this play right here is just what caught my eye last week. Great technique, has his arm behind the receiver in case he misses the ball and gets his forward arm in front to block down the pass. That is how you play cornerback. And check it out. He's going to play a little bit of offense, a lot of offense, because he's that type of dude. Yeah, you know, he he's going to play on both sides of the ball. You know, he's got those good hands if they got him at wide receiver and at cornerback as well. And, and, and he wants to give it an interception, I'm sure. He does uh, really, really one of those outstanding two way players. So we're, we're really excited about this game here tonight. It's a great matchup. Daphne, again, coming in. They know they have to win this one. Blunt wants to win to get in. They can still get a little help. You got four teams vying for two final playoff mm -hmm. spots. And we'll talk more about it throughout the broadcast here tonight. Daphne, will they make it 22 straight years in the playoffs? If they win tonight, they'll do just that. Blunt Leopards and Daphne Trojans tonight here on UTV 44. Friday Night Rivals in our final broadcast of the season as we close things out tonight here in Daphne. And Speaking of Daphne, let's go down on the sidelines here in the field. And Amanda is with us to tell us a little bit about some of those potent weapons the Trojans have tonight, Daphne. That's right, Jim. It's a bittersweet night indeed because it's the last UTV 44 final game for us here. But you know what? I have to say it's going to be a great matchup against the Leopards and the Trojans. Now, specifically, Daphne, they have a powerful offense with a trio that you guys already probably have heard of, and that's Jaquan Miles, Darius Johnson, and Malik McCain, who as a junior already had several D1 offers. Now, I had a chance to speak with Coach King, and he said these are phenomenal athletes. They even practice and compete with each other even when they are not being told to. Now, all together, the trio has 15 touchdowns, so I'm very excited to see their game tonight. Jim, back to you. Yeah, we haven't seen the Staffy team since early in the season in that game against Spanish Ford, in which they dominated on the field, and then of course, had to forfeit because of some uh, a, a player that was ineligible on the roster. So that's what makes this game so important tonight for the Trojans. They won the toss. They'll defer. And Bonner with a high kick. He'll go back to the 11. And slipping down is the young man that Vic talked about to open up the broadcast, Armani Diamond. And we will see this blunt offense. LaMarcus Brown at quarterback will lead them out. He was our guest on the pregame show. And Fine young man, and they've got a lot of talents on that side of the ball as well. Do the Leopards? They come in seven and two, and there is Lev Holly 
38 and 17, 69% winning percentage here at Blunt. Won the region back in 2016. Of course, Blunt, such a rich history. 1990, 92, 96, 97, 98 state champions. And Lev Holly trying to guide the Leopards back to the promised land. LaMarcus Brown. Give this one up, Jarris Williams, and Williams up the left side with a lot of room, and Williams all the way across midfield, slides off a tackle at the 40, still on his feet, and Williams all the way down to the 25-yard line, 50. Rips off 50 on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, I said to Lev before the game, I really like your running back. He said, which one? I said, the one that's really, really, really good. And he just laughed. <laughs> he wore number 99 last yeah. week because of a jersey um, mix-up. Back in his customary number three, he looks good no matter what he's wearing. Yeah, he's closing in on 1,400 yards now on the season after that big run. 16. Danny looks better in his 99. <laughs> of course, that's what Big Clock wore uh, <laughs> in high school. There was talk they were going to retire it all across southeast Alabama, the 99. But they, I didn't have them. a big enough chip. That threw yet. So they'll actually mark him at the 26-yard line. So we'll give him 49 official. we got a flag to the near side. And, didn't see those big jump plays much no. last week. And let's find out our first infraction. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Jerry Pilgrim telling us about our Metro by T-Mobile flag and Lev Holly giving a little explanation over there from the side judge and first and 15 here for the Leopards. Marcus Brown. 1,940 yards through the air this year, 17 touchdowns. He's also rushed for 400 and put six in the end zone. With the ball in his hand. To Williams on the right side, and he'll fall ahead for just a couple there as James Quinelli, the sophomore, makes the tackle. It's the blunt offense, Deeds, Crenshaw, Eaton, Howard, and Dortch. Up front, they talk about how big they are in the defensive line. They're good size on the offensive line as well. On the outside, they like to get it to Cameron Graves, number 17. Also, Vic talked about Armani Diamond Williams in the slot. He is another little speedster. We can get the ball in his hands and plowing ahead for a few more here. Going to bring up third down for the Leopards. And Staffney defense, Quinelli, who made the stop there, owned that. Davis, Pruitt up front, and Hamilton Baker. He's got three interceptions from his defensive spot there. Hankins and Manning also there with him in the secondary. Cleveland, Stewart, Case, Reynolds, and Jordan Brown in third and seven. Here for LaMarcus Brown. This time, that was the big quick pitch off and cutting. Looked like he was going to lose his balance, but instead cutting all the way down inside the 10, inside the 5, trying to push it forward. It's going to be first ball came out right at the end, and Daphne's got it at the one-yard line. That one came out right at the end as they pitched it to Grays, who picked up the first down. It was going to be first and goal. Jarius Pruitt got it. And Daphne comes up with a first big turnover of this one, they'd force 10 coming into tonight. Watch Grays here. Still got it, still in there. It and came out. Yeah, stripping away at it. Nasser Bradley. But they seem to be having a conversation about it. Maybe they're going to say his progress was stopped. Cade Reynolds. Did we get a signal? Yeah, Cade Reynolds was the one who was there, or there could have been a, you know, there could have been a whistle while they had him in that group, but. Yeah, they're you know, the side judge about it. Through the beanbag emphatically, yep. and it's first and down. Now he does confirm it is a turnover. Yeah, if there'd been a whistle, obviously the play's over. So sure. It wasn't an inadvertent or a quick whistle How on that one. And only the second time all year Daphne's recovered a fumble defensively, and maybe none bigger than that one right there because they were down inside the one for yeah. Kenny King's squad. They were going in. Little doubt that with four shots yep. from where they were. Fourth year for Kenny King, 27 and 16, and he is really molding this program into what he wants it to be. His mentality, his coaching staff. Battle out of the end zone, has some time, fires it off the back foot up the far side and incomplete. And how about that? Backed up inside your own one. And we said, all right, well, Battle's only thrown one interception all year with 20 touchdowns. Let's see if we can get something going here. Hicks, Bueller, Galmichi, Molden, and Pope. The offensive line for the Trojans and those wide receivers that Amanda's told them about. Juan Miles had three touchdowns last week. 
Malik McLean, he's the big lanky one we'll see a lot tonight. Darius Johnson and Holmes. And then you got Tyler Bradley, just a sophomore in the backfield. But it all goes through Trent Battle, one of the top quarterback prospects in the state for class of 2021. Battle going to keep this one. Can he get out of the end zone? Not a chance. Safety for the Blunt Leopards. Wow. As Jaharvey Chapman Reese blew it up there. It looked like a little option play, and Battle decided to pull it down. And it wasn't like a safety. Was he going to get back to the goal line? He was closer to getting knocked out of the back of the end zone. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were playing all on their side of the football, and penetration was just everywhere. Nowhere for him to go. He was just trapped. Booker, their leading tackler, was actually the first one in there and had Jaharvey Chapman Reese. So the Leopards say, I'll score one way or the other on this drive. Yeah. I'll play on, I'll do it on defense if my offense can get it in. And you really feel points are going to be the premium in this game all night. But well, one thing you notice on that play is that Booker was not playing in coverage. He was, <laughs> as soon as that snap happened, it was almost like he knew the count. Yeah. And he got back there so blunt, forcing the issue when they have Daphne at uh, second and, and uh, 10 from their own one yard line. They, they came at him. Metal Whipping Center. Raise the roof cam. Wow, so what a what a momentum, what two momentum swings we've already had in mm -hmm. this game here. And, and you know, Vic Lock like a safety, it just doesn't happen very often. I mean, that is something that can be very uplifting. And Vic Lock, uh, look at Lev Holly there, who is handling the defensive coordinator duties this year for the Leopards as well. And they're giving up 10 a game. And, and he's well, got a little step in his pep too, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> Lev, Lev's pretty, pretty good at calling things on that side of the ball. But you're right. You know, when you can get a safety, I mean, that is a premium. You like don't get that points. often. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So you feel really good about your defense, and that's a real confident driver. Confident. Bonner with a kick, but we're going to have an offside against Daphne. And so now that's going to back up more on the free kick, and, and now you're looking at the Leopards. The chance with some great field position to come out of this with another Metro by. In addition to their two points. Right. Joey Pilgrim. Dead ball. Offsides on the kicking team. Five yard penalty and re kick. Joey Pilgrim wants to tell you to switch to T Mobile now and take advantage of the best deal in wireless. No reason to throw a flag on the play at Metro. Stop in for <laughs> any of the stores for details, terms, and conditions. And so Bonner will get back to, to the 15 to kick this one off. Joey's about to inquire about his free phone. <laughs> just leave him out of this thing. <laughs> uh, so Bonner to kick again. Diamond back to return to the near side, and he'll go all the way back to the 35. Armani Diamond all the way into Daphne territory and upended there and be wrapped up at the 45-yard line. So as we said, good field position. Bryson Cleveland making the stop. Hey, if you want to email, last chance to email us. Last game of the year here tonight. Send your questions to guys at utv44.com. Well, they can do it after the season. It just may not get to us yeah. immediately. Yeah. But Talk to you in August. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have that answer August 15th. Ah, send it in. Say, Lockett, what you got on the docket next Friday night? What you gonna be? What you going to be doing? Well, I'm sure Dan's agent answers all of his emails and handles his Twitter account. I talked forward. to a guy in the stands before the game. That wasn't my agent. I'll he tell did, you that. He did not. <laughs> he, he was not trying to secure you future employment. It didn't no, seem like. No, he was not. So Brown now waits for Williams to come. Far side to near. Takes the little swing pitch. Reverses field. Makes a nice little move. Cuts it up. Wow. Jarris Williams He's got making something, something out of nothing. Yeah. He's got something. I mean, you know, very, very shifty and tight spaces. But then he can accelerate again, Vic. He's got, he's got great lateral movement. But he can also pick him up and put him down again going north and south. Yeah, you can see Alonzo being creative and trying to get the ball yep. in his hands early so right. they can take control of this game. I looked at it. it could have been a disaster, but because it was him, it wasn't. He picks up seven. Again, just another junior on this team. And speaking of juniors, Brown, junior quarterback, will keep it. He's going to have a first down. And yeah, he sort of kind of did uh, a 180 there, not a complete 360 out of there. His 49th rush of the season. He was our guest on the pregame show, another delightful young man that we got a chance to to meet and really cherishes his role as the quarterback at, at Blunt and everything that comes with it and what is heaped on the shoulders as a starting quarterback for the Leopards. He's a leader. Yep. But credit to Daphne defense there for stopping him. He tried to put a move on, and that defender said, nope, 
Needed going anywhere. Needed three, and he got it for the first down. Williams cuts it back in the inside, and he's got another big game, and he's going to pick up close to a first down. And we're seeing holes up front this week we didn't see last week, Dan. Yeah, I think we're also seeing a lot of variety in this very multiple offense, Vic, with a little little counter right there. Yeah, That's the Anthony first counter play. They run a great it. job opening that hole. They there, did. Three. You run, and sometimes on the counter, defenders are running themselves out of the play. And when Williams has it, you don't want to be going in the wrong direction. He's hard enough to stop when you <laughs> when you got it figured out. Yeah. He picked up 10 on first down, and Leopards will take a timeout here with just a little winning your end. And you, I tell you what, you wouldn't want it any other way if you're playing the game tonight. That's why we're here. Right. Uh -huh. So Sarah Land uh, claiming the region championship on UTV 44 last week. They take on Spanish Fort. So there you see. So Sarah Land, of course, is in. Now, St. Paul's, you figure they're going to be in. They play Robertsdale, who's got one win on the, on the year. You expect St. Paul's to win tonight. So they'll be in. So then that leaves two spots for Blunt. Daphne and Spanish Fort, as I touch the screen here for some reason, you're not seeing that at home, but it leaves two playoff spots for those three teams. Daphne wins, they're in. Blunt would have the tiebreaker over Spanish Fort because they beat Spanish Fort, and Spanish Fort takes on Sarah Land tonight, so if Sarah Land wins, you can see where it starts to get a bit a bit confusing here. So you, you just just keep on touching the screen. At some point, we're going to figure all this out. If, 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 but here, whoever wins tonight, they know they're in. If Daphne yep. doesn't win, they're not in. Blunt could lose, but and still get in. Still get the invite, yeah. We know we're out next week. <laughs> we don't we're get, out. We don't get to do playoff games on TV. Kind of crazy, isn't it? It's absurd. Parnell comes in motion. Brown going to keep it. Looking for a blocker in front of him, but a good job to shed off that block by Ricky Hankins there. And the junior comes up with his fifth tackle for, no, they're going to give him back to the line of scrimmage. But yeah. Hankins with a good stop there. He had yeah, blockers he in front of him. Out. He had blockers in front of him. He just didn't have blocks. No, he did not. He played it inside out. Perfect position right there. And the quarterback, you know, yep. had no choice because the outside was covered yep. as well. Parnell was looking to make a block downfield. And Marcus was like, I could use one here. <laughs> <laughs> so no gain on. First yeah. down for the Leopards. That's how good a runner he is, too. They just ran a power play for the quarterback, you know, as you would for a tailback. He can he, he can hurt you on the ground. Williams comes in motion, and they go back to Jarris Williams. And Jarris Williams going to be stopped for a loss there. Should have clarified that was Melvin, Melvin Williams that came in motion, and Jarris there got it, but... We're going to lose one and bring up third and 11. Talented and feisty both, isn't yep. he, Jim? Yep. I mean, he'll fight you to the last second to get whatever he can. And then sometimes he stays on his feet, and the next thing you know, it's a big one. Yeah, he's over 180 carries on the year, yep. so he's their workhorse in the backfield. He's not scared. No. Now they'll go four receivers with Jairus Williams in the backfield on third and 11 for the Leopards. You would think two down territory here. Unless something disastrous happens and wide open in the middle of the field on the crossing route. Braze has got it, stays on his feet. Touchdown, Leopards. Nice play by him over the middle there and keeps his feet going, just runs through the tackle. Yeah, speaking of keeping your feet going, you know, this so much rain yesterday, and yep. I think a Daphne defender slipped right there. Might have never been in position to make the play. I mean, a lot of rain came down at my house. It I don't did. know about over here, but the I field can... actually looks like it. This yep. field does drain does drain well, but when we were down there pregame, I just thought it was pretty ate up. Yeah, that the, the point of the season and the daily use yesterday, yep. too much. Bad combination for yep. it. Grays for the point after, and it's no good. So. Well, you know, I got a I got a text from a fan said, "Hey, we're gonna need those two points because we can't make a field goal." Well, now they make it 8-0, and the touchdown toss, 18th on the year for Lamarcus Brown and Blunt on top, 8-0 early in this one on Friday Night Rivals, brought to you by Andy Citroen Injury Attorneys and presented by Alabama Power. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett up in the booth. Our statistician, Davis Sharp. Amanda Booz on the sideline. Jared Kihas and his entire Friday Night Rivals crew here tonight in Daphne for the big 6A Region 1 matchup and a short kick, and it bounces 
at the 30 where Travis Crum, did he maybe have a knee down when he picked that one up for oh. the Trojans? Got a whistle as okay. soon. Yeah, it wasn't. No, oh, maybe we had it offside on the far side. Nope, that wasn't that wasn't it. I was like, I thought, thought he was pretty upright. <laughs> but Blunt was offside on the kickoff, so they'll have to kick it again. And you saw that Virgil Smith just didn't didn't get a lot on that one. So the Metro by T-Mobile flag. You should look at Lev Holly. He's got to be happy the way his defense and offensive started this one. Don't forget they fumbled it down inside the one yard line when it looked like they were going to be set up first and goal from about the six inch mark. But they march down after they get a safety and take advantage of a short field and get on the board and now they're on top 8-0. They may have traded six for eight yep. as it turns out. But they, <laughs> but they had to do it now. When they got it back after the uh, after the safety they were able to drive it down and get a big play for the touchdown. Six plays, 45 yards, almost three and a half off the clock and Grays with a touchdown reception. That was his sixth of the season. And kick again back to this side, and Crum picks it up, and Crum tries to spin free, still on his feet. And at the 40, so now we'll see this Daphne offense come back out. Other local games last night, Davidson with the win. How about the Williamson win shutting out Viger last night in a rain-soaked night? In Rowe County and XL, you see what happened there last night, along with Thomasville and Clark County, fair open McGill, 7A region matchup tonight. McGill trying to go undefeated again. Theodore, they'll be the number two seed in that region. They're taking on Enterprise and Murphy tonight against Bryant. Baker and Mary G. Baker need some help to get in. Sarah Land and Spanish Fort right up the road here. St. Paul's and Robertsdale. Baldwin County taking on Charles Henderson. Bradley takes the give here and go to the middle of that blunt line and our out-of-town games brought to you by, of course, our friends at Barrow's Fine Furniture. Been with us all year. Johnny Bonner on the stop there for Daphne. And so Tyler Bradley, 557 yards coming into this one here tonight. But just a sophomore, and he's not not real big, as you can see in size, but they expect him to get much bigger. We saw his dad on the field before the game, and if dad's any indication, we're going to see Bradley grow into that role in more ways than one back in yeah. the backfield. He's going to hit a magnificent spurt if he <laughs> grows up to be like Daddy. You see Jaquan Miles there with his 34th catch of the year. What a game he had last week. It was three touchdowns. Trent Battle last week threw for five touchdowns, eight of nine passing, yeah. five touchdowns. Nine throws, five Two, of them for the end zone. 220 yards on eight completions. I think the QBR would be really good on, <laughs> on, That'd be on, my guess. on that one. Battle keeps it himself, steps around a lineman, and then steps into a leopard. Hunter was there, but I'm not sure who was at the first one there at the bottom of the pile to clog things up. But you see, there's Lee Hunter. He got offers from everywhere. 21 tackles for a loss, five sacks on the year, and he's going to be playing on so going Saturdays. On fourth down, huh? And fourth and three from inside their 50. Battle looks over, and now they're going to bring the punt team on. Plenty of time on the play clock. It, just down at 20. Blunt just play yeah. safe defense and uh, get a safety to go back there and catch it. High kick, not, not very deep, but it does take a Daphne hop and then hits one of the Daphne players there as it hit Baker Hamilton. We get a flag there, Vic Locker? Yeah, we did. Okay. Side judge on this side, dropped his flag. So that would make a difference for Daphne. Yeah, it would, be, against Blunt. it would be a fourth down. Usually you can get an indication by you look and see who, what unit comes back out on the, on the field. Officials having a little. Looks like it's a, it may be on maybe. Daphne. Was it maybe after the after the punt, or was it? Yeah, I think it was uh, before the punt. All right. Some type of uh, offensive. Okay. They're talking to Lev about it. Yeah. So, so it looks like illegal motion against the offense. The penalty just declined. Would take the results of the play. So Joey Pilgrim, you see him right there. Started no shave November this morning. <laughs> Doing a great job to get the get the growth going to uh, bring out the full beard here on our. 
on the final week of the regular season. And see the blunt off by Daphne's defense. I think we need to stop here. Like it's, it's only 8-0, but like this, you could you could see where Blunt gets away from teams quickly. Marcus Brown so put it in the air, zips it near side, and unable to hold on to that one was Jalen Parnell. Had what they wanted right there, just going right there at that slot position. Parnell, right not the seam. Yep, not one of the tallest receivers on this blunt squad. Let's watch the delivery here from Brown. Boy, what a nice throw! Just drop it over Ricky Hankins and into the hands of Parnell, and probably lost his concentration because the defender jumped yep. up there right. Yeah as the ball was about well, to pass over his head. How about the touch there from Brown, though? Ooh. like that. If he can zip it. Yep. Second and 10. Jarris Williams with a cutback. Williams across the 40. A little bit of spinning motion out of those wheels, but he yeah. was still able to maintain his balance, and looks like he's going to have the first down. We'll pick it up on second down there for Williams, and he'll move the sticks for the Leopards. Jarris is one of those players you you see the numbers, you see what he's about to run into, and you think, okay, this play's just about over mm -hmm. now. And then you look up and it's four or five yards yes. later, or sometimes many yards later. Absolutely. 49 on the first one of the game. There you go. Not afraid of contact, and he's got a knack of making his way beyond contact. To the near side of that one, over the head of Parnell as the pressure was coming. Yeah, he was getting heated up, and he was just trying to get it out there, trying to see if he could get it enough touch and everything inside to uh, give his receiver, Armani Diamond, a chance at the ball, but uh, wasn't quite able to do it. Diamond was actually in the in, in was throwing a block downfield. It ended up closer to Diamond, but he was trying to get it to the receiver, mm -hmm. Vic, who's uh, a little bit closer. It, that pressure just messed that whole play up. Yep. Threw it completely off. Yep. <laughs> pressure will do that, right? No pun like intended. Yeah, absolutely. You want to heat him up. Second and ten. The Leopards. Brown wants to throw it again. Single coverage down the far side and just a stride too far in front of Grays. Grays, his favorite receiver with over 40 catches. Tell you what, when you watch Blunt, you don't have to worry about them ever not going down the field, Jim. Yeah. They will. They will. None, none of the New Orleans stuff checking down Charlie. <laughs> they will. They don't go back and look at the tape and say we just didn't take enough shots down the field. No, very often, they do don't they? do that. But maybe they do. That's yeah. why they keep oh, taking right. more. <laughs> they like the, that. The, may be a factor, huh, Dan? Yeah. To them, it's never enough. Big plays on the edge. The average 31 points a game. Now third and ten. Brown, just a three-man rush, rolling out. Now trying to avoid it, slips all the way back inside the 35. As John Davis has his second sack of the season. And that one may be a little bit of a wet field, but much more about the good coverage downfield. I agree. Yeah, LaMarcus didn't see anything downfield that he liked. I mean, because he had a pretty decent time back here. He tries to slide over, just wasn't comfortable trying to get the ball downfield. Didn't have his feet set to do it either. So Daphne does come up with a stop. And Jaquan Miles uh -oh. back now a high snap. And good job by Grays to get that one off. And actually a pretty decent punt. And there was a little contact there, but yeah, that could have been. Punter a should have did a little more acting, huh? That could have been a disaster, huh? Yeah, yeah I mean, they're going to have to shore up these special teams, Jim, in a, in a close game again. Yep. That could cost them. Bayside on the road against Satsuma tonight. Bayside going to the playoffs. Selma. At home tonight, as is Marengo County. Scambia County on the road, T.R. Miller and W.S. Neal. Flemington in Southern Choctaw, St. Michael and Alberta tonight. Also, Leroy and Milry, St. Luke's and Cottage Hill. R.C. Hatch and Keith, Choctaw County at home tonight. Pike County hosting Sweetwater, Red Level and Fruitdale. And A.L. Johnson and J.F. Shields tonight. Again, thanks to Barrows Buying Furni Fine Furniture. We will uh, take a look at the playoff picture, since that's all we can do. Uh, a little bit later tonight during the broadcast battle. Looking down the near side, hangs that one up in the air, and knocked away at the last second. Great defensive work there by Armani Diamond, Vic Lockett. There was a reason you talked about that young man, and you highlighted it with a great deflection he had last week against Sarah Lane. Well, take a look at him here. He's in perfect phase with the receiver. When the ball arrives, he sticks his hand up there and knocks it away. I mean, McLean's 6'6 on the outside. 
No fear in that young man's heart. Yeah, just a one-handed pass breakup there by Diamond. Well, he was comfortable where he was. I mean, he was in perfect phase all the way down the field. Williams now in the backfield and uh, zips to the near side, and that's incomplete. And trying to again, good coverage by him. Yep. It was a comeback. He, he thought it might have been the go route, but he came back with the comeback. Right there, Aaron passed though. Kenny King was talking about, so, you know, so the last four weeks, he said Trent Battle's really been on. Like, he's just been on. He's been super accurate. And you, you'd love to see that in a quarterback, but a lot of times it's that defense that dictates a lot of that accuracy it cut between coverage and also pressure you're getting up front. Yeah, and, and they're deciding, a, you know, play by play. A lot of them, they're, they're coming after him, and they were on that second and long. Boy, third and yeah. ten. Ball start. Ten. Five yards. Still third down. You know, you, you think about, okay, so that false start there, Vic. So the offensive line that, that moved was lined up with Jaharvi Chapman Reese, who was one who was in on that safety. It's funny how a big play by the defense early yep. in the game, get an offensive lineman gets beat. Now that's in his head Absolutely. all night long. Yeah, it's influencing now. He's uh, trying to get off, trying to get a quick start. Third and 15. Battle. Floats this one down the far side into double coverage. and. Again, Diamond in perfect phase with the receiver, almost looking like the receiver yep. on that one. Huh, Dano? Yeah, I mean, he had safety help, too. And, uh, I don't know that he needed it. He didn't need it, no. <laughs> so it's going to bring up fourth and 15. You know, I don't think the Trojans have a first down all night thus far, do these young? That was a no. That was a quick three and out. McLean is a good-looking athlete, though, isn't he? I mean, they've got just a junior. Yeah, he's got for 400 yards and receptions. This year, Davis Oliver. I like when your punter is a linebacker as well. And a rug rugby style kick. Good one. Bounds all the way down inside the wow. Great roll to the 25 yard line. So on our last broadcast of 2019, I want to thank, of course, Andy Citrin. His office not very far from here, right over here in Daphne. And again, back with us this season, Andy Citron, injury attorney. So Andy wins. Good luck it. You sounded like, <laughs> like the guy. You know, like, I like that. Lock it. Is he that's, moonlighting with some voice work? Hey, Dan Brennan? He's, uh, he's coming spot out, says. He's coming after my job. I don't like that. He, he just concentrate on football. It's man. been Come a on. tough night for Brennan, future work employee. Oh, you got people. It's not been pleasant. Yeah. Very nice gentlemen. Real, I don't know why they're coming. Get some arrows here. down in the in the grandstand. Marcus Brown back under center for the Leopards. They're up 8-0. Again, winner of this game is in the playoffs. Brown pulls it down, and now is still looking to try to make something happen downfield. Said is forced out of bounds. But you know the one thing we saw last week we see like his decision making. You know he things are covered down there. He's not trying to force things. That takes was care of the football. Very smart there, wasn't it? He made a lot of plays just like that against Saraland, where it was uh, addition by subtraction. He didn't make the big mistake and kept that game close. You know, Vic, we record our pregame show on Wednesdays, and we were talking to Lev Holly before we went on the air, and he was just talking about going back, watching the tape, how well he thought his team played against Sarah Land, the mm -hmm. dividends that game was going to play. I mean, he really, he was really proud of the way his team played in that road game. Yep. Grays takes the little pitch from his wide receiver spot, and... Get drugged down by Hankins out at about the 31. Third down coming up. You know, look, reflecting on that game, I could see him thinking that because if you think back on it, you know, without that big play from that tight end, mm -hmm. we may have a different outcome. So they dropped what would have been a touchdown pass on the far side, would have yeah, put them would have put them up on top. And yes. suddenly you get the lead, and now you're Saraland playing from behind. It's mm -hmm. a different, could be a different game. So it was, it was just a, a game between two really good teams up there. And, Someone uh, has to lose. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind watching a rematch of that in the playoffs. That'd be nice, huh? Down the, just there as a fan. Third and seven, and they give it off to Jarris Williams, who picks up the first down. And then we saw that last week as well. They'd be third and maybe a little medium plus. They have no issues just keeping the ball on the ground and putting it back in Williams' hands. Uh, uh, Williams is a really good back, but uh, they really opened a big old hole on the left side there. So the, Credit uh, the big boys up front. Deontay yeah. Dees, Bruce Crenshaw, Kevin Eaton, Connor Howard, Kentrell Darch. In the run game, they're winning a little bit here early. Yeah, they are owning that line of scrimmage. As we're inside 20 seconds here in the opening quarter in Daphne. 
Back to Williams this time. He'll try to bounce it to the outside. Nice play. Yeah, good job with a handful of jersey by Jackson Manning to pull him down because it looked like Williams was thinking, boy, I get around the linebacker. I got the corner here. Mm -hmm. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. Blunt with a safety and a touchdown, and they lead by a score of 8-0 against the Trojans. Dafty's had good luck in the series. They've won the last three and six of the last seven, but tonight Blunt's on top after one here on Friday Night Rivals. Big crowd on the Daphne sideline here tonight on a cold night to open up our November games. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Blockett, Friday Night Rivals. Our November game. In November. What did I say? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Singular. Right. Huh? We don't get to do them after no. this. Says. First down. We don't even get a card. Now Brown wants to air it out, looking for Grays, and he can't hold on. Wow, what a well-thrown ball there by Brown. Yeah, Gray's got quite look at it. Yeah, he got turned around just a little bit, but that was another well-thrown ball there by the yeah. quarterback of the Leopards. Over another the left. shot down the field, Hunter. Yeah, Hill. another shot. Good point. And it's just over the left, more over the left shoulder. Just, just kind of hung him up a little bit. And uh, some other uh, just quickly scores pass on Sarah Land on top of Spanish Fort by a 10-6 margin right now. That one, a big one taking place up in. Spanish Fort. I say up in Spanish Fort from our location here in here in Daphne. They're down in seven, and they give it off to Williams, who fights ahead, but he's going to be short of the first time. Nice first job. down this time. Yeah, good job by that Daphne defense, not allowing. Johnny Purdue made the stop, had some help yep. from Ricky Hankins. Boy, Hankins played well in the Spanish Fort game. We did. We called his name a bunch that night. We did. Football player. Yep. A dude. Yeah. He's a dude. <laughs> Speaking of dudes, I better say hello to my buddy David Carpenter before he goes to bed. He always tuning in and said, he usually just don't make it through the second half. All right, well, when you said that's speaking of a week of work. Speaking of dudes, I knew it wasn't going to be a shout-out to Miss Millie at that point. So. <laughs> no. Jaquan Miles back, uh, back deep. Another good punt off this time. and The speedster takes it at the 20, but good coverage there by the Leopards downfield is Savon Davis Jones, backup running back, came down to make the stop. So Blunt's offense has been prolific here in the first quarter. Daphne's not so much. So Daphne, we talked about it open of the show, 21 straight years they've gone to the playoffs. An impressive, impressive run. The last time they didn't make the playoffs, 1997. Here, Jim Cox moved to the Gulf Coast, and that was when they failed to make the playoffs. Who was the coach here at Daphne when they failed to make the playoffs? I think I may have that one. All right, we'll find out in the fourth quarter of it. <laughs> Can I give you a hint? No. <laughs> so, first down for the Leopards and Deontay Williams. I can't hold it in. Junior. Didn't his title begin with soup or something? <laughs> Super salad, like at the um, Friday's lunch I special? I don't eat salads, Jim. What are you talking about? Miles. <laughs> trying to steer away from kind of hold people's interest to the fourth quarter on the trivia, Vic. I think the game will keep them there, but well, the, the trivia as well. Vic's pal's already asleep, so <laughs> yeah. don't count on that. Battle on the keeper. Battle races out to about the 32, going to bring up third and short, something Daphne has not had yet here tonight. Yeah, I think Battle, you know, he's going to have little choice, but he's going to have to do more of that, use his feet as well as his arm, this attacking blunt defense with really good DBs doesn't give you much of a chance to, you know, get a whole lot downfield. Actually, they're going to give him the first down there. I thought he was a little short, but instead he... Well earned, I would say. Yeah. Great player, great kid. <laughs> Drop this one back off Darius Johnson on the left side, and he's got those long strides, and he's up the far sideline across midfield. And nearly to the 40. What do you get speed to do? You get him going which way? The wrong way, right? Uh-huh. And uh, Big Taylor Hicks out there, 79, he was set up so well, he's like, I don't have anybody in the truck. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the fast guys were out there, and he's like, well, I'm not going to be able to catch them. He's like, Daphne, where are you? Yeah. <laughs> 27 yards for Darius Johnson. Trent Battle talked about him in the pregame show. He said he's one of my speedy guys on the outside. And now trying to cut it. Back the other way is again. See, the field does look to be a little 
little slippery out there. It's just when they're trying to turn the corners. Yeah, Bradley, I think he's deteriorating. Yeah. I, I don't think as the game goes on, we could see more and more of that. The mm -hmm. play is going to be blown up simply by a slip. How about so this? The Daphne offense is alive. That, and that play <laughs> reminiscent. Couple first downs, huh? Reminiscent of maybe some of the old Globetrotter days you used to refer to here yeah. on this Daphne team. Back in 2010, they just were putting, they were lighting up scoreboards, and, and uh, the playbook was wide open, wasn't it? Oh, and then, See the raise the roof camp from our friends at MRC, and we've had some NFL players roll through this Daphne team, and really had some well, great athletes come through. Like, Face mask by the defense. Wow, 15 yard penalty. Remember when I done that offense, the uh, the Globetrotters, Coach Vicker heard about it. And Gave his blessings to the nickname. I like that, Dan. I like that. I said, well, Jim and I, Vic, we don't know what's coming next. No, no. The bucket of confetti. Let's mm -hmm. see here. I guess. Wow. I, didn't, I don't know if it was on that, but it's kind of more just a, I don't know if there was maybe something away from the ball that maybe. drew that 15. Maybe. Because for, for it to be 15, you usually own the runner. Yeah. And he, he now the hand, the, the arm was, was kind of up under the chin you saw there, but there was no face mask. I wonder if they're gonna. Oh no, it's gonna be. A... Okay. From the end of the run. All right. Do a little it. relay with the ball. With the, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's no. No, there's no nothing face there. Mask there, yeah. Okay, so. Now we don't know that that was what they were looking at. Inside the 25, and Bradley patiently gets it down now about the 19 yard line. Is Bradley just waiting for his blocks to get set up there before he was finally yeah, could finished have been, off? Could have been one of those hands to the face, and he but he called said face, face mask. Yeah, huh. yeah, meant to say hands. To maybe the more face. helmet to helmet is what it looked like more of anything in that he collision. Certainly wasn't nothing there with the back. Yeah, Dewberry makes the tackle and. Five yards on first down for the Trojans. Bat wow. Battle gave it off, and Sidney Collins comes in, and the senior linebacker blew that one up. Fourth tackle for a loss on the season, and poor Bradley had no chance. No, yeah. I mean, and that, that guy, we've called his name for a couple of years, right? Yep, yep we have, and we talked about this attacking blunt defense, and you can't uh, you can't draw up a better example than that. <laughs> That's downhill playing. That is downhill. It? That is an attack. <laughs> that is illegal on the streets. <laughs> Third and seven. And they'll empty the backfield. They'll bring over Davis Oliver from his linebacker spot, the little H-back. Help out on the block. Battle near side and overthrew his receiver and nearly intercepted by Armani Diamond and fourth down Battle's coming up. frustrated. Yep. Uh, he, he's frustrated, but he, he, a couple of things. He's getting more pressure on him than St. Paul's applied, certainly. And, and, and number two, they're not really getting a lot of separation with his wideouts in this game tonight. So uh, he, he can only play with, with the guys around him and how well they're going. So long field goal. This is going to be a 38-yard attempt on a bad field. Corey Bonner. On for the kick and he pulled it to the near side. Nope. And so their offense stalls out here. I'm gonna give a little shout out. Chris Miller and his wife Christine Miller over beautiful Niceville, Florida. We're watching the game tonight. Love Just Niceville. Got the fire going in the fireplace. Got the wow. looks like about a 90-inch TV above the fireplace wow. there to uh well, that's the kind of friends watch you the have, game. Jim. <laughs> Friends, yeah, I don't, I don't have the 90. I don't have the big, the big screen there. So all the way over, it, over. I think it's cool that you got fans all the way over in Niceville, Florida, watching Blunt and Daphne play here tonight. Yeah, I think it's probably says, docked in their backyard a couple of times. It says a lot about the matchup and yep. the fact that uh, Mobile and Baldwin County football is so highly regarded. Quality Mi ball. Yeah, miles from from where we are. I like to live in a place called Niceville. Nice. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> I'd, I'd squat in the Miller's house. I'd say that. I've been there once or twice. Giving off to the far side. Making a little move. Going to be another first down for Jarris Williams. And There's a reason you were talking to Coach Lev about this young man, huh, Dan Brennan? Well, what do you see, Jim? He's just one of those kids who is explosive. He's not afraid of contact, but he also wants the ball 
every play, and they give it to him a whole bunch. Yeah, and they're really blocking this team defense a lot better than they did a, a week ago at Sarah Lane, but now it looks like it's coming back. Might be a reason he had that opening on the right side there. Not sure by T-Mobile. Apologizing for bringing the play back to Blunt. Holding by the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Remains first down. Is that a spot penalty where yes. if it was downfield, it would be? So they're calling it at the line of scrimmage? So a little, little, little downfield, huh? That, first and 20 here, so, yeah, so they right at the line. Right at the line. Or. On that far side. So now Brown, they wipe out the big game by Jairus Williams. Grays goes in motion. Give it back to Williams and tried to cut it back. Still stays on his feet and able to get a few. And that looked like that was going to be a, a loss of a couple. And you do see, like Vic Lockett talked about it, you, you see big chunks of the turf coming up. And that's, again, that's that's not a anything to do about this field, but just the amount of rain we got over here. Yeah, I saw for Shore. a minute we went to come jump on your boat, Jim, because <laughs> it was coming in droves. Yeah, it really and, I mean, continuous droves. So no field can, I think, withstand the beating that our fields took this week. It's a pickup of three for Williams here. Blunt on top. They got a safety early after they turned it over at the one-yard line. Brown fires that one on the rope on the far side. And now we got a flag right after the uh, catch was made by Armani Diamond. Utilizing him on offense now. It was... He was wrapped up by the Daphne receiver and Marcus Brown. So that's going against the Trojans. The Metro by T-Mobile flag. Stopping at Metro by T-Mobile. Get the best deal in wireless. Jerry Pilgrim. Back mask. Gets the defense. Oh, Five-yard penalty. Wow. Still okay. second down. Yeah, you saw I Cade, saw that one. Yeah, Cade Reynolds got his hand. And he, when he noticed it, he immediately released it. Like yeah. he touched a hot stove. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So it'll be second down at about one. So Blunt with a chance to dig out of this first and 20 hole that they had. Not an automatic first down. Didn't make the line. Well, I thought it was personal foul. No, nope, it was just five yard, just a five yard variety there, Rick Lockett. Okay, well, he did take it off. Run! Now they bring in. The senior, Savon Davis Jones, and there's another flag, and I think we're going to see another face mask. As Savon Davis Jones comes in and gives Williams a little spell here. Let's look. Same oh, player. Right there. Yep. Yeah, that was Cade Reynolds again. We're going to see how tall Cade is. Well, he went down awkwardly, too. Yeah, this Cade's is going to be the big one. Personal foul, face mask, gets the defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Could that maybe happen a little bit too if, you're, if your footing's not solid, Vic, and you're slipping around a little bit and suddenly you're you're having to kind of maybe reach for something you weren't expecting to because you're, you're not? No. I don't know if in the ground. I just think he's just trying to hustle and make yep. a play and inadvertently getting his hand in the face mask. You know, certainly nothing uh, devious by the kid he, because he immediately removes it when he realizes it. It's just a good hustle play, and uh, unfortunately he grabbed the face mask. Up to the... 49 for the Leopards. 7 and 2, their only loss. The St. Paul Saints on the road and also the top ranked Saraland we saw last week, 17 6. Grays on the right side. Took a big lick. He'll get three on that one. Quinelli was holding on. Right in that jet sweep. Trying to see if uh, that speed can get to the edge or cut it up under the. Underneath the, the perimeter. Now Bradley came over there as he was being held up and finished him off on the tackle, and they'll give him only two on first down there. There's Ben Thomas. Read a lot of his high school football coverage on the right over there by Lev Holly. He does a great job for AL.com. He does a really great job. I tell him every week I steal his material. Yeah. <laughs> I don't compensate well, him. Let's I tell him thank you. Don't tell him I do, but I do. <laughs> Davis on the right side will fall and pick up. Well, I can hear you saying, well, Dan, that's all right if you do it. But Vic Lockett, he owes me some money. <laughs> he, 
he is he, he's always complaining about TV timeouts. That I'm like, hey, you know, we we have very savvy local businesses that want to be a part of our broadcast. You're talking about Ben. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. so they want to be a part of the broadcast. They see the value at yeah. being part of some of these wholesome as high school football. You so better learn that's what happened to uh, the paper is going to three times a week. How about that, Vic Lockett? <laughs> And that's a shot from Lockett. <laughs> he seems such a nice guy, and he just yeah, smiley he gets him in there. Third and seven. Brown quickly far side dropped. As yeah, Diamond, Diamond there, Couldn't not hold so on fabulous to that one. on that play. Quick slant would have had the first down. Yep. Diamond, he a really good athlete. Touchdown if he that Maybe. That Maybe. Yeah. Receivers have kind of let down their QB a couple of times tonight. We saw it last Jesus. week. Yep. See what this week. But, you know, they throw it so much, you're going to have a few misses out sure. of these guys. So Daphne's defense has kind of, no pun intended, found their footing a little bit after the <laughs> first quarter when Blunt was kind of running all over here. With, I think they had almost 150 yards of total offense in the first quarter. And Jaquan Miles back. And now we get a flag before that one got off. Be careful with the punter back there, too. Yep. Touching the knee. Yeah. That was close. I, was, I thought he was going to call that, yeah. but he actually kneeled before he got it. Okay. I was going to say he was wrong. But uh, it's the false start. Yep. So that'll back the Leopards up five more. So Blunt has a safety and a touchdown. Daphne missed a field goal. You want to know about this Blunt defense? They're playing a Daphne team at Daphne that got over 50 a week ago against St. Paul's. Yeah. And they've got nothing tonight. High snap way over the head. Gathered it, quickly got it off. What a great job to just get that one. Yeah, the punter almost had to fair catch the Five. snap. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing I'd be concerned about. I talked about this earlier is that, you, you know, for if you're blunt, you don't want to give them the breaks. Nope. Make them earn it. Yeah. Good job there by Virgil Smith. to, And he didn't panic the high no. snap. He didn't panic. He kind of went back center field style. And well, he's had a couple of them slightly high earlier. Yeah. So, I mean, I think he says this is par for the course. Yeah. If I can get my hands on it, I can just about get it out of He's here. getting used to it. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and it rolled all the way down to the 27. And that's where Daphne will come out after a timeout here. Five minutes to go in quarter number two. Friday Night Rivals brought to you by Andy Citron, injury attorney. The winner of this game is in the playoffs. And right now, Blunt on top, 8-0. Friday Night Rivals, Blunt and Daphne. Big matchup here tonight. Again, if Blunt wins, they're in the playoffs. If Daphne wins, they're in. But if Blunt were to lose, they could get some help and still get in there. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Booz on the sideline, David Sharp, our statistician, Jared Kihas and our entire crew here. And on the tackle there, Lee Hunter makes the stop diving there for yet another one. And uh, he's a guy we talk a lot about, huh, Amanda? We definitely do talk a lot about him. I mean, six foot five, 287 pound. He's, he has over seven plus offers, including Alabama. Alabama's Nick Saban actually visited him, and so did Auburn's Gus Malzahn. And you know what? He has over 50 tackles and seven sacks. So I can understand why currently he is number three in the state of Alabama. And that's according to the 247 composite rankings, Jim. Good work, Amanda. They're quickly up to the near side, able to. Get that one off and complete. And Darius Johnson, who had the big run on the last drive, has the catch there. And that's going to be good for a Daphne first down. And you know, you know what I want to I want, I want to see Lee Hunter kind of move in on the offensive side of the ball. Sometime tonight, Big Lock. If I don't get to see it tonight, I'm not going to get to see it ever. because we. Yeah, you know, he did start off as a guard and tackle. So uh, he I, definitely has the ability. I mean, Plays there like great a on end. the basketball court, too. The basketball player, has got good hands. Just put him You'll in. take a charge from him. Won't you? I'm not, I'd be Lee like Ole. Hunter, Lee Hunter on the basketball court. I am making a promise myself to go watch this year. <laughs> Jaquan Miles forced out of bounds after he took the quick one there from battle. No. Like it a tight end, like a little, seeing a little tight end, a little soft little jump pass into the end zone. And I, actually, on tape, I have seen him catch I'm, a touchdown. I'm telling you. <laughs> Didn't Are steal you that one. Us what he didn't steal call? that one from Ben Thomas. No, he's I a, did not. He's a print guy. He didn't have tape. <laughs> <laughs> he's second and seven. Battle. Ooh, a little trouble in the backfield now. Gets his feet under him and finally able to dump it off. Nice play there. Cross midfield. Wow. 
That was All not how, by battle, right? Yeah, that was not how that one was drawn up. And then, so he survives the I mean, kind of botched. he got five defenders in his face. Yeah. And then got his feet underneath him. Not number five. There were four others to the right. You didn't see. Yeah. It, 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 this, it's like pulling teeth tonight to move it against this blunt team. And that's why you got to give battle a lot of credit. He's going to have to have a lot of mental fortitude yep. in a game like this, Jim. It's not going to come easy. And a lot of ad living on the run. Yeah. Big shift to the far side by Daphne. They'll pitch it back off to Bradley. He's looking for the blockers. You saw the flag come in there, and Bradley pushed out of bounds. You know, talking about the footing, that you, you could see that play a role with the quarterbacks if their feet aren't able to get set underneath them on especially some of those longer throws that end up throwing off their back feet. And Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield by the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. I did thought it looked a little crowded back there, you know, but I didn't say anything. That works against the Washington Generals, Dan Brennan, but it does not. <laughs> they do not let that play against the Blunt Leopards. Uh, Canadian lead. Well, I would be surprised if we get through this whole game where it, this turf doesn't play a role, you know, in, in a turnover or a big play. First and 15. Here again, this was an offense that put up. 40, uh, excuse me, 53 last week against St. Paul's. Bradley again bides his time and then turns the corner and he's going to pick up about 10. Did they throw a flag on the far side, Vic? Yep. And he was he was just waiting to turn the corner there and it well, looks like first and 15 is going to turn into first and a lot more for the Trojans here. Another Metro by T-Mobile flag. And it just was too much of a delay out there to get that edge. Hold it. Against the offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. It's almost like when you look at the NFL and the, the back just cleanly runs around the end, you're like, not possible. <laughs> yeah. Not possible. Somebody got healed. Except against the Dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just saying, nice play. Yeah, yeah, well, they just don't call the penalty. It's happening against them as well. Yeah, so but. First and 24 here for Daffy. Left side give will get just a couple. Jay Harvey Chapman Reese, senior in there for the Leopards. And we see that Hunter, oh, he was just a little slow. We saw him actually get a little bit nicked up in the game last week, but he was just at the bottom of the pile there. And yeah, we want to see that young man play all night because he puts on a show. You talk about him being a little bit nicked up. I don't think anything little happens to him at all. <laughs> Everything that happens to him is at least medium sized. Banged <laughs> up, huh? Yeah. I tell you, it'd be such a big deal if Daphne could change this scoreboard before the half, but right now they're just having trouble. And they, they will get the ball to start the third quarter right, as well. Right. Battle. Avoid, avoids one man, now rolls out, going to tuck it and get shoved out of bounds right on the. Blunt sideline, and Daphne wanting a flag, and you can see the official was right there saying, nope, nothing nothing there. Sidney Collins was over in on the tackle. I thought I saw something fling in there. It's not resembling the flag, but I don't think, I don't think so. I think so. I didn't really think they needed. Mm. Just kind of right at the, right at the line hey, there. I think with the second hit, they yeah. could have got him. Cameron Johnson was the first one there, but well, if it was on the opposite sideline, it certainly would have happened. You would think. It should have happened on that sideline. Yeah, the, flat, the coaches are screaming. Third and forever, and they'll go off to Bradley trying to get to the outside, and Bradley's slung down there. Jamar Booker, a leading tackler for this Leopard team, and well, you get so behind the sticks like that, it's just. Zach Golson, in the offensive quarter. He just, just don't yeah. have it in the no. first, first and 20 plus. There are no plays. Right. And and Booker, who showed us earlier, he could red dog straight at the quarterback, shows right there from his Mike linebacker position. He can also go from uh, sideline to sideline, Vic. Mm -hmm. Davis Oliver on the punt. And. Daphne letting the play clock run. Yeah, I think they the had down. the wrong personnel out there. Yeah, I think and they were fine. They rushed two of them off, and I think were they, they short? Well, and I think they were okay, though, because they were they were okay just to let it run down because, again, they're, 
They're trying to bleed as much time off this clock uh, to give it back to Blunt. Well, they may be a little bit of concern about field position with that potent Blunt offense. Yeah. So fourth and 16 coming up. They'll, they got the timeout. Punch team will come back. Thanks to Alabama Power jumping on board. Friday Night Rivals this year. And we meet a lot of great folks. Came out to some of our games earlier this year. Had them on the broadcast with us. And we love our power. Think about there in California. They're mm. cutting the power off to avoid the wildfires. Boy, so, such and then it didn't work. Sad situation out there, man. Uh, it's it uh, a lot of friends affected by that stuff out there. It's 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 bad for sure. Mm. Just not in favor of cutting the power off, then. Yeah, huh? <laughs> And it, look, it looks like it wasn't the answer out there. Well, it wasn't, the, you know, we can get into that. I, I mean, you're between a rock and a hard place if your power lines are starting forest fires. Right. Yes. Crazy. We need to start burying the lines. <laughs> yeah, I don't, it's hard to believe. Glad you got that engineering degree. <laughs> yeah, we'll right. Fly out there in the morning. <laughs> get it all straightened out. Oliver. <laughs> Now, high snap. Ooh. He has to go back. And now oh. he falls down and his knee went down, and he's going to be down right there. Dan Brennan, you talked about that just five Clock's minutes ago. Still running. Why is he stopped? All 47. the way back to the 30 yard line. And you said it, the footing on the field becoming a factor even more and more as the night goes on. Yeah, and, and you just knew that it was a recipe for a big play. Now, it may not turn out to be a big play because of the time on the clock, only 44 seconds remaining as Plunk grabs his ball at the 30 yard line. But <laughs> they're not afraid to go take a shot downfield. No, I, you know, I would run a screen to Jarius Williams. He's in the slot down here at the bottom of the screen. And he comes in motion. He'll go out to the far side. Instead, it's quarterback draw with. And he slips. Marcus Brown. And he'll fight ahead to about the 25. And Blunt. A couple of timeouts. And now we get a whistle. But we got to whistle the clock. Again, the, the clock is run by official up here, but it looked like it kept going for a while, and that's the second time timeout. Hey, we, we should say, too, you know, we kind of kind of were wondering at the end of the first half last week in the blunt game, you know, why they didn't take a why they didn't take a timeout. They had to hurry their field goal unit on. Actually, did a good job to get the field goal unit on and they get did. the attempt, and they missed, but we were kind of scratching our heads up here wondering why they didn't take a timeout. Well, they were out of timeouts. We didn't have it communicated up to – to us that they had burned their final timeout. It wasn't it wasn't up to date on the scoreboard there at Saraland either, so we were kind of scratching our head wondering why. Yeah, we kind of double checked and the scoreboard still had them with uh, yeah. timeout remaining and ours ours had them with two. Uh, so certainly our apologies to Levin and staff. That's first thing I did when I got to the stadium, I <laughs> yeah. said, brother, I owe you an apology. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Vic, Vic uh, let us know uh, Sunday afternoon what the story was. And we were like, ooh, yeah. you hate that. I mean, yeah. so that let Holly's watching the tape. He's like, well, I'd, I'd have called a dang time out if, if I, I had, had one. Yes. Fellas, I really would have. <laughs> Expecting a call from Lev Sunday afternoon. Yes, right. He's actually bigger. I don't think he looks at our tape when he's looking at the tape, though. I, you know what? <laughs> we've, we've got. I, I think he wants to know what you're thinking. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Second and six for the Leopards. Brown with time. Dances around. Now he decides he wants to keep it to the near side. Instead, pulls it out wide open in the corner. Touchdown, Leopards. Wow. Melvin Williams with a reception. And what a play by LaMarcus Brown. Bought time. Looked like he was going to pull it down. His footing was good. Stopped and then delivered it to a wide open Williams at the pylon. Well, Jim, you talked about it earlier. Both of you guys pointed out the fact he keeps his eyes down the field. He's really smart with the football and taking care of it. Saw the guy wide open, just got his feet set and well, slung that, it out there to him. That was that was a total package right there. Mm -hmm. the, the threat of the run, keeping his eyes downfield, being a good leader, and then making the play for him to be for him to see that receiver was amazing. What a great throw, Grays, and he's got the PAT. They made a field goal. Went just <laughs> over the crossbar, <laughs> and now same thing. 15-0 lead for the Blunt Leopards, and how uh, that's a. What well, a huge that swing, huge and, and, swing. It, and it came on what Dan talked about yep. the special team slip on the turf. Yeah, look at I mean, just wow. It, it, you know, you're you're the linebacker, you're the corner there. You're thinking, all right, he's pulling down, running. Yeah, he's he's got us, we got to stop him. Yeah, and, and, his body language said, Here I come, and it took that much time, right? Yeah, there. and if you look at where he did it on the field, it's kind of not. So torn up where it is and deteriorated. Outside, so the, he, yeah, outside the hashes, outside it's always going to be better. Sure. Yeah, so he had a chance to set his feet, get his arm caught, and, 
and take the shot. So all that rain last night, none of it fell outside the hashes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more playing inside the hashes where it always gets chewed up is what I, I say. you got to you take know. your time to explain well, things. Well, the field has a nice big crown, That's too, true so too. it drains over that way. Well, you're right, you're right on that. It's right. I was wrong. Right. Uh, uh, Twenty years. You and know, takes, Dan's takes big on the weather and the agriculture thing, so you know you got to prove it to him. Well, how about Blunt though, huh? Wow, boy, bouncing back after a tough loss. Now a bouncing kick. He picked up at the. 25-yard line, Whoa. and now with a lot of speed, you saw <laughs> Philip Jordan, just a junior, and shoestring tackle, uh, ever so. Wow. So, so one second ticked off the clock on that one. It was at 15 when they kicked off. I realize it doesn't start until the offensive player touches it. A few seconds ran off. And the Daphne fans, I tell you, they don't have much to cheer about. So, you know, you're, you're thinking, all right, you're, not but you're fun either to be out of. You're Daphne just, you know, 35 seconds ago, you're thinking, all right, they're going to get, get out, out of here. Get down here, eight, we're going to get the ball back, we're going to regroup, and now you're down two scores. Yeah, 14 seconds left. Oh, that was a big score by Blunt. Huge. On a bad snap. Battle. Pressure coming. And you Slip see, again. Yep. Darius Johnson. Outside of the hash. Couldn't come back to uh, <laughs> to get that pass, but also. The so throw out my theory, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, to battle, this is almost like he's playing a completely different game this week, Jim. You know what I mean, Vic? Yeah. I mean, last week. He was, well, he was able. He had time. The running game was clicking. They could make big plays downfield. This week against this defense, none of that is there. And that doesn't help. No. Boy. Hicks what it? dropping back on the far side before the snap. That kid's got potential just from size alone. He's a sophomore. 6'5". 6'5", 250. Left tackle already. Yeah. Must have some good feet. Yeah. He's going to get some looks. So I'm probably already getting them. <laughs> You're right. Back them all the way up to second and 15 now. And you see Blunt with... Three defenders back inside the 40, and that one tipped in the airs. Trying to come Jamar Booker. to the near side, and Booker got his hand up to knock knock that one away. And, and But this, this half just now suddenly, if you're Daphne, you're like, okay, but now we just, we, we got to get out of here. We got yeah. we to try to make some adjustments here at yeah. halftime to see what we can do against they, this. They can't wait to hear the band now <laughs> because they, anything else would be. Dan, you got to cut it out. <laughs> you're going to have me in stitches here. <laughs> Third and 15, and they give it off to Bradley, and Bradley right up the middle. Bradley took a big hit right at the sticks. I think he's going to have the first down, but it'll close out the first half as time expires. You can see the explosiveness from Bradley there, but free ooh. safety doing his job. Yeah, they had their safeties back. They understood time and distance and all that, and it was a nice run, but uh, that was the end of that right at the 45. And it was Casher who came up to make the, the stop, and what a... Impressive road first half of football here by the Blunt Leopards. On top by a score of 15-0. Here in Daphne, Blunt 7-2 on the year. You can see why so impressive on that defensive side and also offense clicking as well. Let's find out what the head coach Lev Holly has to say. Amanda. Coach Holly, how big was that last play where you guys scored those extra points just before we were getting ready to into the second half of the half? I thought it was big, you know. I mean, it's different than two touchdowns to one. And uh, I know they're going to come out because King going to have them ready. They're going to come out and try to fight, throw some different things at us. But we just got to be able to keep matching, keep doing what we're doing. Got some things to clean up, but the effort and the tense is there just like we want it. Yeah, and I remember right before the game I was asking you, what are different ways that you motivate your team? And I'm definitely seeing that here. You know, you tell them play with intention and, you know, just play big. And this is a do-or-die game for you guys. So I think that it's really major that you're, you're doing that. And what are some things that you're looking to change in this next half? Just, just continue staying in the culture. I mean, like I said, these are the things that we went in off season and built for to be in this type of situation. So we're going to go in, clean up some stuff, and just come out and keep fighting our tails out. All right, thank you so much, Coach. Jim? All right, thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Lev. Holly, he can't wait to get in there and tell those kids good job there in the first half. His team on yeah, top. Keep it up. 15-0. They at the late score there to build the lead to double digits, and they lead the Daphne Trojans. Halftime festivities coming up here at Daphne right after this.
Halftime here in Daphne, week 11, final week of the regular season. Blunt with a win, they get to the playoffs. Daphne with a win, they're in. But if Blunt lost tonight, they could still find a way in through a tiebreaker. But halftime, they're leading right now 15-0. Amanda is down on the field. We're going to find out some of the exciting things that are going on uh, off the football field and in the classrooms from both our schools here tonight, Amanda. That's right, Jim, and I am here with Principal Woods, who is representing his school, as you can see with his jacket on. Um, it feels good to be out here, doesn't it? It's our last game, and you guys have been doing such an awesome job. Let's talk about your school and what you guys have going on right now. Hey, we got a lot of awesome things going on at Blunt High School. We're super excited to talk about our Healthcare Academy, which is our signature academy, and also our Gerald TC program, which kind of focuses in on 300 freshmen, which is what we have, all of them going through a leadership class and getting an opportunity to start their ninth grade year off right, knowing that they need that to graduate within four years. And now what's really impressive is that you guys are like one of the first schools in Alabama to do something that you were t telling me about. And what is that? Man, Colonel Cross has taken for the last two years a group of kids, 10 plus kids, to Washington, D.C. to the Army 10K, the 10 miler. Uh, we're the first school in Alabama to do it. We've done it for two years and we'll continue to do it. Well, that's awesome, Coach. And you know what? I know that you also are a huge football fan. Your son also plays football. So let's talk about the football team. And I must say that Coach Holly brags about working for you. He really, really enjoys being there at the school. So let's talk about the football team because I know you're super proud of those boys. I definitely am. First of all, let me say this. We couldn't ask for a better leader than Lev Holly. Uh, he's got our young men disciplined. He's got them playing hard. They represent our school the right way as students first and then athletes. Uh, great opportunity out here tonight to be in the playoffs next week. Uh, the young men have, have represented Blount High School very well this year. All right, thank you so much, Principal Woods, and we really appreciate you for being here tonight with us. Jim, back to you. Go left. All right, thanks, Amanda. I know this is your first year down here. We've been doing this a long time, and that is one of our favorites. Jerome Woods, his son, we watched him play at Blunt, and of course, Jerome and Vic had football battles going back in the day. We had a great one last week, and Sean Bird, who we met before the game and was on our pregame show and our player of the week last week and he was really one of the keys to help bottling up that blunt defense a uh, blunt offense last week Dan. yeah he's uh, a linebacker a few words <laughs> but that much really didn't matter we had him on the pregame show too we got a chance to sit down with him but uh, Jeff Kelly spoke so highly of him before the game. Remember when he said, yeah, we've had a lot of good linebackers. We haven't had many like him. Yeah, like, yeah. He really called him out. Great compliment from a coach who's been a coach of a really great program with a lot of really, very good linebackers over the last eight years or so. And he was, the proof was in the pudding. He had a great game. We called his name a whole bunch there. And thanks to Herc Reynolds for presenting our player of the game each and every week during the high school football season. And we'll let you uh, vote on him tonight. Go to utv44.com with our three players we'll tell you about, and then uh, I guess we'll tell you who he is, who the player of the game was next year in August. <laughs> Take a time out, come back, learn more about what's happening. We'll find out some more educational news from Daphne High School with Amanda coming up after this here at halftime. Blunt on top, 15-0. See our halftime score, Jim Cox, Stan Brennan, Vic Lockett here in the booth. Amanda Boos on the sidelines. We're at Daphne. They're always great hosts with lots of hospitality. And we're going to find out more what's going on here in the campus of Daphne High School. Back down to Amanda. That's right. Yes, Daphne definitely has a lot of hospitality. And it's actually senior night tonight, which is pretty cool. And I'm here with Miss Deborah Few, who is the head person in charge here at the International Baccalaureate Program. I said that right, right? Yeah, the yeah. IB program. So let's talk about what exactly that is. So the IB program, of course, is an international program and it's a college preparatory program. But what IB likes to focus on, besides just the college preparatory acad academia, is also the components of what makes a good person, a good citizen. So we're looking at things like compassion, we're looking at things like internationalism, we are looking at components of rigor with learning and and components like that. A lot of things that you need in real life outside of high school and college. So that's really awesome that you guys do that. Now, what is the process for people that are at home who may want to sign their kids up for the IB program? What, what do they have to go through to get into that? So Baldwin County has two IB programs. We have the North Baldwin IB program at Daphne High School, and there's also the South Baldwin program at Fairhope High School. So each program looks a little bit different depending on the school and depending on the needs of the school. For Daphne High School, we have an application process and we actually do an interview process, and that starts when you're eighth grade coming into ninth grade. Because it's an international program, there are four years of foreign language that are required, and so we like to start our ninth graders on that first year of Spanish, which is what we offer. 
And so then we go from there and we call the first two years pre-IB where we're getting the students ready, we're teaching them note-taking skills, organization skills, just getting them prepared, and then we'll actually enter the IB program in 11th and 12th grade. It's a two-year cohort. And then, correct me if I'm wrong here, because I actually had a friend that was in IB in high school. When you're in this program and you take the test and you pass the test, you're pretty much open to any school in the country, correct? Yes, ma'am. But it's also not just about the test. So IB does not always like to focus on just the exams or po possibly like college preparatory scores. They want to look at the whole program. And so they offer what is also the exams at the end of senior year where you can get scores for college classes and college credit. But they also look at CAS, which is community action and service where you're involved. They look at components like TOK, which is called the theory of knowledge, where you look at why we know what we know and how we know what we know. And so they want you to be completely well-rounded. Well-rounded all the way around. Yes. And thank you so much, Miss B, for telling me about this. And they also have some really cool, exciting things happening at the IB program. So make sure you guys check Daphne out. Jim, back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Amanda. And uh, great job all year long at halftime. Amanda has uh, checked in on our educator spotlight and finding out what's going on at our schools. We're showing their football teams off each and every week. Halftime score, you see the Leopards on top 15-0. Back to Daphne right after this. See our score there. Blunt took the opening kickoff, drove it down to the one, fumbled the yard line, but then uh, fumbled at the one yard line. Then they got a safety, however, on Daphne, got the ball back, marched it in for a touchdown, up 8 0, and then took advantage of a special teams miscue by Daphne late in the first quarter at the 30 yard line and got the ball back and punched it in for a touchdown. And that's where we're at here at the half. Blunt on top, 15 0 over Daphne. The Trojans will get the ball back. We got highlights and more coming up to get you ready for the third quarter right after this. Here we are at the half, Blunt on top by a score of 15-0, a 6A Region 1 matchup. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, and Vic Lockett up here in the booth. We all know what's at stake here. Daphne's got to win to get in the playoffs. They've got to get something going offensively, Dan. Yeah, and the way Blunt is playing defense, 15-0 feels more like 30-0. You know, <laughs> yes. they, they've been so stingy on defense. I don't know exactly how uh, Daphne answers the call here in the second half. Yeah, I mean, it looks like they came out a bit flat on defense, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say offensively it's been Blunt flattening them. First play of the game from scrimmage from Blunt. Jarris Williams takes it 49 yards, and that set them up as they then drove all the way down to the one-yard line. They can be converted. Looked like he was going in here as Cameron Grays, but watch. Ball's going to pop out right at the end. Kate Reynolds is going to be the one who ends up getting on it for Daphne. See, they already dodge a bullet. Right after that, they got a safety. And then coming back uh, after the free kick, Cameron Grays gets the touchdown there. That put Blunt up by a score of 8-0. And then right before the half here, after Daphne had a bad snap deep in their own end, gave Blunt ball, the ball back at the 30. Brown able to find Williams in the end zone. And that really change things around at the end of the half to give Blunt the 15-0 lead. You see there, just 95 yards of offense in the first half. And we've had a handful of penalties there, and Daphne's offense not been able to get going much, and Brown through the air and battle just four of 11, throwing the ball after being so dead on last week, eight of nine for 220 yards. And he has not been able to get in any type of rhythm here tonight and we'll see what Daphne can do coming out of the break. Emerson Stribson ready to kick off for the Leopards. Daphne could use a little bump here on special teams to jumpstart things here. And a short kick again bounces at the 30. Picked up there by Travis Crum. And Five yards on the return, and so now we'll see what kind of adjustments we have here at the half. But I imagine really Coach King is telling his troops, you know, you just got to keep chopping wood, you know. Don't pay attention to the score. Just keep playing football, and good things will happen. Yeah, Blunt, thing. on the other hand, I bet you Coach Le Le uh, Lev is saying it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. Keep your foot on the gas. Got it down near the red zone, and they ended up missing a 38-yard field goal in that first half as well. And so now we'll see. 
Trent Battle and his crew. Battle looking to throw, goes over the middle, and he's got Jaquan Miles for the first down. Spins all the way up near midfield, and he'll cross midfield. Now they just need to stack on top of that some more positive plays. That's a good adjustment by Zach Golson, the offensive coordinator. Yep. Something quick, get it out of your hands real quick because they just, you know, were having so much trouble protecting battle, but also the slant over the middle is a different look than we've seen in the first half. Yeah, they took some shots downfield early and uh, also really a lot, lot at the boundary. Yep. And, and we're trying to get Blunt to go side by side to side. So they can get some of those intermediate routes going here, but they convert to start things off. Battle gives it off to Bradley. Bradley will get about four before he's bottled up there. What did Kenny King have to say as he came back on the field, Amanda? Hey, Jims. All right, so when I spoke to Coach King, he said, you know what, they need to come back on this field and make less mistakes. And they're not playing like their normal selves. He said, this is not us. He said, of course, they had maybe, you know, a few sloppy practices when it came to the weather because they weren't expecting it, you know, the weather to be this way. But he want, he gave them a chance to regroup in hopes that they're going to come back and show who they really are on this field, Jim. Yeah, they're going to have to if they want to keep playing into the postseason. Yeah, I think we might see a little bit more of that running game because uh, Bradley has made a, a few good runs. And really nice one right before the half close yes, there. Yes, he did. They feed it back to him. And on the left side, he's got the first down. So back-to-back -back first downs now on this drive for Daphne coming out of the halftime break. Good blocking on the left side. Yeah, it looks like they're going more towards that six hole toward the edge out there. Yep. Staying away from the big man, Lee Hunter, because yep. he's always hunting. They got a big man, <laughs> Taylor Hicks, that, that young sophomore left tackle, 79. They're kind of running behind him and Bueller on the left side, so they're doing a nice job. Keep following him then. Harris Mitchell came up to make the stop, and now they fake it and drop it back to the near side. That one knocked loose, and they're going to say incomplete. And now a flag at the end of it. Darius Johnson had it, dropped it. Are they going to get him for excessive I think action so. because he doesn't know the ball's out? Uh, right. Yeah, that's. I'm with you. And the whistle was slow to come as well because when we first looked at it, it's like, wow, did he hold on and then just drop it for a fumble? Let's watch here. Johnson, ooh, that's really close. Oh, but OK, you, he's probably getting in for uh, the bulldog. That, that's it. After the play, big penalty, personal foul against the defense. I don't think they want you, you know, lifting them up in the air, kind of WWE style. Right. Well, Diamond shows, even in a penalty, he shows he's a lot stronger than he may appear. <laughs> he's man. fabulous. Oh, Monty Diamond. Robin Leach would love his name. So, <laughs> to find out what his middle name is, right? Uh, to find, well, we don't. Probably Jim. So we can't, G E M. Can't do, can't do any games after this week to find out the young man's middle name in the playoffs or anything. So, or first, Carrot. first and 10 after the 15 yard walk off. Bradley, little stutter step. Oh, like the speed of that young man as he's down to the 15 yard line here. How about Daphne taking it right down the field to get the help by Diamond with the uh, unnecessary roughness? They used to call it back in the day, but uh, they've done it on the ground. They've done it with a quick slant, and suddenly this is an offense we basically that was didn't AWOL see, yeah, in the first it. half. Pickup of seven on first down for Bradley. Watch that left side. Battle. Going that way, gives it off to Bradley, thinks about cutting it back and now trying to get to the outside, but Sidney Collins with a handful of jerseys is going to drive him back, and then Jamar Booker comes over to finish him off. Yeah, Sidney did a good job extending his hands to get rid of the blocker and yep. then grabbing the tackler, I mean, the, the uh, bat. And then uh, more of his teammates with mm -hmm. bad intentions flying around the, <laughs> Absolutely. the football. That's what you want. You want everybody on defense running to the football. Yeah, so they lose. If you get that, you'll win a lot of football games. They lose three on second down, so third and six. Jay Holmes in the slot to the bottom of the screen. Johnson split out wide, and now they bring Deontay Williams in the backfield. Pressure coming. Battle able to get away from it. Now tries to get to the far sideline. Stays on his feet and lunges. See the spot. I think he's going to be just a tad short. But, boy, the, the rush came from the near edge, and Battle 
That looked like that was going to be a disastrous play. Yeah, he's a good athlete, though. So you see him escape this, and Lee Hunter is one of them right there, along with Booker. And like I said early in the game, this is one of those games that's pulling teeth. Battle's going to have to make plays with his feet. Yeah, he showed a lot of patience on that one to kind of drive it down. Looks like they're taking a time out there. I think, they were, or no, I think they had a spot a, right. I think they had a problem with the chain on the far side, and now they got it. So it's going to be fourth and a full yard. No thought at all. He's going for it, huh, Dano? Yeah, down two touchdowns. Devon, uh, Beyonce Williams in the backfield, and battle looks looks over, and now we got flag. a flag. Wow, it wasn't a play clock. They had 15. You gonna get someone for flinching? You know, they came up just to look at the play to the near side. Jerry Pilgrim, tell us about our Metro by T-Mobile flag. Hit ball, false start, wow. offense, five yard penalty. Still fourth down. We have seen a little bit of that out of these Daphne Trojans, self-inflicted uh, wounds. and So now you bring out the field goal team and try to yeah. cut into the lead. Well, not ideal that you move the ball, ball five yards further back to give your field goal guy a chance. And... But I don't think you want to go about it in that fashion. Yeah, <laughs> Getting the no, penalty to no, move it No, back. you do not. You do not. <laughs> this will be a 37-yard attempt. He missed from 38 earlier you know and i was kind of thinking you know Corey kick Bonner. it anyway you know just to have somebody to drive Kaden, positive Caden pierce with a high snap gets it down but it's blocked blocked by the leopard so disaster on special teams again for daphne we saw it at the end of the first half sydney collins ends up on the ball but the snap was high that's what did him in on a punt at the end of the first half. You wonder, a program like Daphne, it's unusual to see problems with snaps like that, but you wonder if maybe the first string snapper is injured because that just not, it doesn't look like a first team snap in 6A football. Yeah, that was Jaharvey Chapman Reese who got the block. So, but, but again, it's because you get the penalty, the procedure penalty on fourth and one. The reason you're doing the kick. Right. Well, I kind of felt like they should have kicked it just so they don't. Yeah, but I'm just saying. They lose. I know what you're saying. You go from fourth and one to have a chance to convert. You, 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 you can talk about the net net of it. Yes, right. <laughs> so now Blunt looks like they're guilty of moving before. But, uh, you know, you just kind of Big thinking. Ball, false start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first Ooh, down. You didn't want to go all the way down the field and do like this. Come yeah, up right. empty with no That's points. Right. Again. That's right. Switch to Metro by T-Mobile now. Take advantage of the best deal in wireless only at Metro. See store for detail, uh, details, terms, and conditions. First and 15. And now you this one in the backfield. Williams drops the shoulder and now stays on his feet. And he's got a blocker in front of him inside the 40. 30 and runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line. A gain of 48 to go with a 49-yarder in I the first half. I still think he looks good in 99. Much better. I, you know, he'd look good in a, in a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something different about him. I don't, you know, I'm out of, I'm out of uh, ideas on how to suggest the way he runs or what he does, but you can see this guy's a, he's a, he's a different level of running back than most that we see, and we see a lot of good ones. You run out of adjectives, you run out of metaphors, you run out of analogies. Mm -hmm. He's just great. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> That's right. That'll work. Puts the Leopards in business here at the 26. Brown is screaming to the near side, gives it off to Grays, and he's immediately dropped. That's good defense on the play. there. Yep, Jacob Ombet with the stop. Yeah, that, that was excellent. Wasn't it, mm -hmm. Yeah, it really that, was. That big. He was agitated from the beginning, and then uh, the rest of the group comes in and tackles. Yeah. Williams, Williams yep. averaging almost 15 yards per carry. After the math major didn't come up with that one. Dan Brennan <laughs> came up with that one. There's one math major in the booth, and Dan there Brennan. he is. Yeah, well, was, right. I majored in football. <laughs> and I don't do that very well. So. Loss of one on first down. Brown goes quickly back out to the other side, and this is Williams on the reception, and get to the stick, and that's about it before Cade Reynolds pulled him down. Actually, you saw like Cade Reynolds did a good job there. He was reaching, and the hand was going in the jersey. Looked yep. like it could be a horse collar, and 
He's had his hand slapped a few times tonight. And <laughs> he has up in the face mask, a five yard and a 15 yard. Out. Yeah, so no no gain in third and long. If you're Daphne, you've got to. It's two down territory here for the Leopards, so you've, you've got to come up with a. Only because they're not good at field goals. Right? <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah, they're just in that in between spot. Yeah. They're not afraid to keep it on the ground in these situations as we've seen as they give it up to Williams, and he's going to be short. It's going to bring up fourth and about five here for the Leopards. Boy, that was, that was close. There was a lot of green in front of Williams. Yeah, it's kind of tripped up yep. uh, there. And I don't think he's feeling well. Let's okay. pray he's A-OK. -okay. All right, so that, oh, and he goes right out. So that, that does change your thinking around a little bit on fourth down for the year. You're, you're, you're going to go for it here. but Well, it, they, they still got LaMarcus Brown, and yep. they've got a lot of confidence in it. He's made a lot of plays for them through the season and tonight in front of us. Yep, and I think that this would be a play you would expect Brown to have it in his hands, Jim, and try to find somebody downfield or take off and get it himself. Williams, who's in the slot to the near side, caught the touchdown in the first half. Play clock at one. They get it off. Brown looking that way, comes back and able to hold on and come up with the, I say he's got it. Yes, yes, he's got it at the 15 for the first down. First time Jordan Harris Mitchell has come over from the defensive side to make the make the catch. Well thrown ball and they convert on fourth down. A new set of downs at the 15. Yeah, we were noticing Lamarcus in the in the pregame too. And when he needs to get it to there, get it to you in a hurry, he can do that. He also has got good touches. He showed with the the pass in the first half on the run. Fake. Fired far side, able to get that one off Parnell. And Parnell dropped inside the five, but it's be first and goal coming up here for the Leopards. Nice solo tackle out there because otherwise he was going to score. I, I think Parnell was a little surprised how open he was mm -hmm. when he caught the football. He looked up and no one's around. Yeah. Jordan Powell got there, number 16, to keep him from the end zone. As Vic said, really a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle. And let's see what they're talking about now. Uh, Metro by T-Mobile flag. Uh, Trojans are saying, I should say, the Leopards are saying it's going to go against Daphne. Maybe the horse collar thought. Personal foul against Daphne. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Okay. I think it might be the. I think they might have. The hand might have got inside the jersey there on the on the tackle. No you don't explanation. Give up, yeah, you don't give up much on the right on the half the distance here and. Williams stays out. Savon Davis Jones in. Lev Holly looks on. Brown looks to pass that one. Tipped up in the air and grabbed by the Daphne Trojans that came up in the air. And Quinelli comes up with the interception. He had his hands up 6 3. And Lamarcus Brown, the officials are. I couldn't, I didn't have a great look through the bodies there. And there's oh, a got a flag. flag. Yeah, they were trying to complete the slant there real quick. Great Quinelli. play by that. Uh, wow. Yeah, wow. good catch yeah, by that defender. So Quinelli comes up with it, both hands up. The flag was all the way back in the end zone. Like maybe a hold back there, but it would have been something that happened quick. Or, or maybe, did, yeah, maybe did, an offensive. Did, it, oh, did they get the play off? Yeah, in time, they wave, wave it off. off. Okay. So, wow, turnover that Daphne desperately needed. And the sophomore comes up with the interception. You know, you, you, it would be interesting to know what the original call was that they now wave off. I think that would complete the puzzle a little bit. But yeah. That would be more drama to the football, right? <laughs> uh, the rest of the story. Curious. Comes up with a turnover here. Quinelli with the interception, but the Trojans down 15. They need a win to get to the playoffs. We're halfway through the third. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett here. Amanda Booz on the sideline. David Sharp, our statistician. Jared Quijas in the truck. Spanish Fort. On top of number one and unbeaten Sarah Land in 6A, 16-10 right now. How about 10-10 down in Fairhope? Battle wants to air it out, looking for Johnson down the near side, and he can't hold it. They had it there, Vic Lockett. Yeah, That's he it. had a step. Uh, the, can't say the cornerback was in phase with him that time. Uh, but it just couldn't pull it in. Injured 
Trojan lineman there is Johnson. Good throw. Good route we're in. But, you know, threw it back to the inside of the field there. Give him a chance to make a play. Right, and it just goes off Darius Johnson's hands. And I mean, that one score it has them square into the fall football game. And that's Hicks who's down there, and Dana pointed out how much they've been you know, moving more toward the, the left side behind him. This would be a big loss for them. Watch top of your screen now, right oh, in the middle. Right there. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hyperextension there. And I'll tell you, that does not feel good at all. Yeah. You saw one of the linemen, offensive linemen tied up with a defensive lineman, fell backwards, and Hicks just couldn't. When you really would love to see the turf give way to help your foot mm -hmm. there, it just, it just didn't. But he's getting up, and that's that's great. Thank God to see that. He's a yeah. big kid. Big and man there that is a, on that is, his feet. That's a great sign. Out. Wow. He may have something lingering from that because it looked rough at the May, time. I promise you, he <laughs> will feel that tomorrow yeah, yeah. and through the rest of the game well, if he gets back out there. That's the question, really, because they're going to need him. Any, you know, chance to come back in this game. You lose an alignment like that. Mm. Oh. He's moving around pretty well, yep. considering what we just saw. Boy, Daphne was just a... About half a half a football length from Johnson hauling that one in. That, that, that was a you know out of last week's recipe against St. Paul's where they just had one big explosion play after another. That would have been Johnson's fifth touchdown reception of the year. Williams comes in, battle with a lot of time, fires, and he's able to get this one complete. Jaquan Miles, and now Miles, you see his speed across midfield, still on his feet all the way down near the 30. Boy, a couple of things that jump out. How good does Battle look with a clean pocket? Mm -hmm. And then how about the speed of Miles? Yeah, that looks like that uh, stuff you see by Bama with those slants right there. Yes, it does. And yeah, you, don't, you don't see a lot of receivers running away from blunt defenders very often. No, and it takes Diamond coming from the other side, yep. pursuing, and then Miles enters Diamond's side of the field. And he had the big game last week, and now Bradley back. In the backfield with Battle. Motion to the near side. Pressure coming. Look at the sidestep. And then he lost the football. Picked it up. Still on his feet. And then kind of maybe made the business smart business decision to get down out of that trifecta of mm. Leopards coming at him. Oh. Yeah, both these quarterbacks have tremendous poise. Yeah. The, the pressure's coming from the side. It gets away from Collins, but then just lost the football. And then keeps his eyes up here and said, oh, okay, yeah, I need to get Cut my losses, at, right? Yeah, I don't want any part of Cameron Johnson barreling in on, on me, so they lose four. Yeah, we'll call it three. Booker sure does show up a lot, doesn't he? He's their leading tackler for for a reason. I think Daffy got a little bit of sideline warning. Willie Gaston down there saying he needs some room to work that field judge side. Keep your eye up on the left side. is fired slipping down as... There's that turf monster. Yep. Yeah. Bad snap, messed the timing up. Yep. And the receiver going across, trying to yep. gear it down, and this turf again gave way under his footing. You can slip when you run through three or four puddles along the way. <laughs> Just so much rain yesterday. I wanted to say we see. It might have. Jerry Stubo's Lee from the defensive side over. Nope. Get that corrected in a second. Now scrambling back out. Battle all the way back at midfield by his shirt. They had him, and he got it off. A great job as Jaharvey Chapman Reese had him by the jersey, and he was able to get it at the feet of Bradley to escape what would have been an intentional grounding or a sack all the way. I mean, that would have been a sack of about 20 yards. You know, I don't know if they were setting up the screen or they just beat everybody because yeah. the lineman was still way behind the line of scrimmage. So I think they just beat their blocks yeah, and got and I, back there. I think one of the, you know, you – they just lost a great lineman. Mm -hmm. yeah. A guy who's been able to do the job on that left side, and with him out of the game, that's uh, that's tough duty for the... Uh, yeah, Nick Dotson has come in there to replace him. 6'3", 205. Mm -hmm. And Daphne with a play clock down to two. Will Battle get it off? He just does. And now Battle looking on fourth down. Rolling out, keeps his feet under him, and then fires, and it's incomplete. And fourth down... They'll yeah, turn it over. They turned over on downs. Yeah. That, again, another drive thwarted. 
They, they've so, shown some life on offense here in the second half, though. They've, they've made some plays. They've run it a little bit better. They certainly have made some big plays passing the ball. But you get behind the sticks on that the bad snap again that battle can't. And now yeah, this blunt defense is, you know, been but hasn't broke. Mm -hmm. So Williams still has not returned after we saw him leave on that last drive. And Savon Davis Jones stays in at running back behind. Lamarcus Brown graze in motion. Flip it to him. Flag there. Gonna be a motion against Blunt, but Daphne's gonna decline that penalty yeah. because the loss goes all the way back to the 26. Oh yeah. So you get the loss and the down. Yeah, they had confusion as to who should be open oh, yeah. or off. Wow, Kenny King is all the way out past the numbers. Yeah, he's having a conversation with Willie Gasson, but I'm sure they're not talking about the LSU Alabama game. They might be. <laughs> Couple of roll tiders. Yeah. Not the time or place. Though, Not right? the time or place. Metro by T-Mobile flag. And that was a. Jerry Pilgrim. Illegal shift. Body offense. Penalties decline. Yeah, so they declined the penalty second down coming up. Amanda's got an update for us on the sideline. Amanda. That's right, Jim. I wanted to give a, a quick injury update on the junior running back, Jarris Williams, now. Um, I was told that it is a jammed thumb currently what he is suffering, and um, they're currently wrapping up his thumb right now, and we may see him in the game from what I gather, but we'll just have to wait and see, Jim. Thanks, and when you, thanks Amanda. When you saw him head off the field, he, his thumb was already taped yeah. when he headed off, so it might be a lingering injury, but he was in pain as he... Certainly Through all of that, he's probable. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got we Metro were talking about the thumbs not long ago on, yep. on the pregame show. Yep. Exactly. Metro by T-Mobile. Flag here on this play as well. Yeah, Dr. Boatwright was telling us about thumb injuries. Face man. Gets the defense. Wow. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Okay. I don't think Jerry has hurt his thumb checking his Twitter feed like I do. Oh, yeah. I don't think that was, this is a little more <laughs> earned than mine is. <laughs> that did come up as I recall. <laughs> All right, so, should that not be, still should be second down, I believe. And Don Marker does read second down. Because they get the, they get the penalty, so. I saw Connor Howard, big offensive line, just kind of giving like a little, Basketball jumps shot sign there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the down mark and officially keep it at second down. Brown gives it off and nothing doing there for Davis Jones. Great job by the Daphne D. Just clogging lose. up that uh, counter tray action. Home vet with the stop. His fourth tackle for a loss on the year. So that's his third down here. Daphne's sideline saying, but that five yard penalty on the face mask, you don't get, just wiped out the play and they got the five yards and kept it at second down. So here we are at third and four. Let's take a timeout. They do play clock was really close there at the end. But they decide to stop the clock before that one gets snapped. The uh, trivia question. How about Fred Riley was chirping in on my Twitter account answering the trivia trivia question here. All the way back to 1997 was the last time Daphne didn't make the playoffs 21 consecutive years. And Not my guy, Eddie Tyler. Not, not superintendent Eddie Tyler. Not Eddie Tyler. Just, that was not my old P, K, P coach. In 1997. Way back in 97, I think Fred Riley was an assistant freshman coach at Southern Choctaw. <laughs> Steve Savaris was the man in charge of the Daphne High School. The other super, the super of the entire state. He right? was. It was his first year here 
in Daphne. And so he was the last coach not to take the Trojans to the playoffs. Something he'd like to forget. Just for, of course, he went on to do great things here at Daphne. Bill Tulin. Never been an assistant coach, just a head coach. Always been in charge. Really odd memory. He's never been an assistant coach. So his first job as a head coach back in Kansas, I believe. So here we go quickly out, and that one knocked down on third down. And Daphne's defense came up with a good stop there. 326, they're still down by 15. All right, 15 point lead, but remember again, the special teams. We've seen bad snaps on both sides. Blunt's got to Blunt's got to stay clean in special teams and not hand anything to the Trojans. Or to the Trojans, Jaquan Miles with that speed, he could oh. turn things around. And now Daphne's going to have too many on the field. Do they have to burn a timeout? Uh, and I see a, the penalty flag. Oh, and that's going to be a so first is that down. Be for, enough for it? That's going to be enough for first a first down. And I didn't see the, the flag come out. You saw they were trying to run someone off, and then I saw the reaction of the coaches on the near sideline. And yeah, substitution there. Fourth and four is going to become first and ten after the penalty for the Leopards. Wow. Yeah, the self inflicted stuff is just going to come back to bite them mm. really big. Has thus far. Let's see Don't if know if they can get back in the game, but... Uh, Certainly, if they're going to, they have to cut out the self-inflicted well, errors. Kenny Keefe's got to be a lot more disappointed than he's showing facially, but now can the Staffney defense regroup, stay focused, and maybe get a three and out from this point, get that ball back? Yeah, now you're starting to look down as we approach three minutes to go in the third. Single safety if you want to take a shot. Grays goes in motion, but they give it off to John uh, Davis Jones again. And as Ricky Hankins coming in to make the great the play by Hankins. Yep. He's just a junior. He's going to be one of the leaders on this Daphne defense next year. Well, that way he's set in the middle and let the back come to you. Tackle for the loss on the stat sheet for Hankins. And Brown and the Leopards. Back in the throw, right side. And knocked away at the last second. Had his hands on it. Yep, Nasser Bradley was able to go up and knock it away as that one hung up maybe a split second too long. But you see Brown taking the shot with another well-thrown ball here. I don't think they take enough shots, do they? <laughs> Armani Diamond. The Leopards, I think they're under the gun on taking shots. They just don't do it enough. Well, when... Of course, when you're handing it to Williams as often as you do, and he's yeah. breaking off the big yardage. That yeah, he is a shot. Yeah. yeah. I was being sarcastic there, Dave. Oh, you, really? Okay. <laughs> I just want to make sure that they, they, they've uh, taken a few tonight. But they take plenty. Sometimes they've been, they've been accused of taking too many yeah. in the past. So can Daphne get onto the field, and the snap goes right by LaMarcus Brown as he was not ready for it, and very alertly, Savon Davis-Jones falls on it. Mm. But that one was just, it wasn't a bad snap. It was just... Brown hadn't called for it yet. Yeah, I don't think the communication was good between the center and the quarterback to put it uh, lightly. So he's yeah, he's the only one going. So apparently he got the snap count confused. Yeah, but heads up by Jones to fall on it. So that went about as well as it could for Daphne's defense yep. to get the quick three and out, and they also force him back. Kept their poise. Long way, the snap is high, and it goes all the way over the head of Smith. He hustles back, and he doesn't pick up the football. Grab by the Trojans, touchdown! Midnight Stewart! Wow. Special teams again, and now Daphne is right back in this one. As the Virgil Smith had it go over his head, it looked like he was maybe going to try to swat it out of the end zone. Instead, Midnight Stewart. Well, I said a little earlier, you know, uh, Blunt's winning the football game. They're very comfortable, but no, he the just, errors still can allow another team to get back in, yeah, especially yeah. with the margin where it is. It's not really a huge margin, yep. but they are well in control, 
if they do not make mistakes. Yeah, yeah so he did try to pick it up. He just he did, and you, you could see the potential for a special teams gaff getting Daphne back in the game, and that's what's happened. And now Daphne pulls within eight. Whew. Another high snap. Couldn't fair catch that one. This one does in the Leopards, and the Trojans are back in this one with two minutes to go in the third. Well, that kind of changed around quickly. Yeah. Special teams again. You, you can see it coming like a thunderstorm over the edge of the bleachers. Like, I don't know. <laughs> something might happen here. And now there's a lot of time left in this Let game. Let the umbrellas up, huh? <laughs> you look at only an eight-point lead now, and we are still haven't reached the fourth quarter, guys. No. A lot of, lot of football left now. Mm -hmm. Goes back to Jordan Harris Mitchell. And he slips down about the 25. Let's get another injury update from Amanda. Hey, Jim, that's right. I have an injury update on number 79, sophomore Taylor Hicks. So it turns out that he actually tore his MCL. And for those who may know about that injury, it's going to take about six to eight weeks to fully heal. But the good thing about it is he's a senior, and he has a bright future ahead of, ahead of him, Jim. Wow. wow. You really, really hate to hear that. Oh, yeah. So you hate sending prayers up for that young man. He did. Yeah, get the, the injury report from the sideline there. Exactly what you did not want really to hear from the kid. All right, so now Blunt's offense, who has not scored here in the second half. And in terms of injuries, they're not with their best players so say, far, Jarius Williams. Yeah, you point to that as he went out early here in the third quarter. Thought I saw him trot back out there from the locker room as if he would come back in, but they won't have him out there at this juncture. Gain of just one, and there he is. Yeah, he's kind of concerned there, and it looks like he's pulling his shirt up there. He's going to take his, unloosen his shoulder pads, and that's a telltale sign he may not be returning. Marcus Brown, lots of time. Far side dumps it out across the 30. Parnell with a catch. He'll bring up third down here. He's moved from probable to Doubtful? Yeah, I would, I would, I would say you know if he's not in there now, you, not sure what, you know when, you would certainly like to have him out there at this at this juncture of the game. Well, very ironic, we had Dr. Boatwright on the pregame show yep. talking about that area, yep, that extremity, and the thumb in particular. Third down and four. Here for the Leopards, who again, their offense slowed down. Motley Blitz coming from Daphne. They bring the house. Brown rolling out, stays on his feet, and he's going to be driven down well short of the first down for a loss on the play. Is Omvet in there and a host of other Trojans and big defensive stop again for Daphne Jarius Pruitt there, and he's, he's, he's slow to get up. Down, yeah. Yeah, reaching for his shoulder. And now hope he's okay. Okay, so we're going to go to the quarter break, but now guess what Blunt's got to do? Now they got to punt again. And yeah, they're pitting. Which back. is going to be a mystery. Yeah, inside their own 30 as we go to the fourth. It's been a tight one as we expected for Friday Night Rivals here, brought to you by Andy Citroen, injury attorneys, and presented by Alabama Power. Ready to start the fourth quarter here at Daphne. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Boos on the sideline. Our entire UTB 44 crew led by Jared Kihas and David Sharp, our statistician. So here we go. Punt last time was a high snap. This one much better. Smith gets this one away. Better catch by Miles at the 41. So Daphne with good field position. Down by eight. And they're often still yet to score. All right, here's what we got going on when the playoffs do start next week. McGill Tulin, who's losing to Fairhope right now, 17-10. They'll be the number one seed. Theodore, the number two seed. 
hosting our own friend Caleb Ross, former head coach of McGill Tulin, coming down there. And then Fairhope, Murphy, or Baker, depending on how that all shakes out. And 6A, Sarah Land take on Park Crossing. You got St. Paul's, they're winning against Robertsdale. They're going to get in. Then you see Ufala and Dothan trying to figure out who they're going to play out of this region. Sydney Lanier is going to get the number two seed, which we think don't know. Will, we think, well, yeah. And Bradley on first down, going to rip that one off for 11. And that was actually Williams who came in there. Okay, 5A. Faith Academy, what a year Jack French has had there, but Citronelle as well. Rehoboth taking on Jackson, who they got in after having to forfeit a couple of games. Then Vigers struggled a bit down the stretch here. They get in, UMS right, and their long winning streak. They'll be at home as we see Battle going down the right side again, trying to take a shot, and it's broken up. Jordan Harris Mitchell was there as he had the single coverage against Crum. Thought he had a step on him, but uh, Crum made up the difference. Staying right in phase with the big wide receiver. Daphne's taking their shots, but they have. Both they have, these teams have been shot takers. Yeah, they have not. They have not had any big plays down the field shot like callers, that. Shot callers, but no big ball in plays. Well, the one was the slant to Miles. Yep. And he made something out of it, but we were comparing it to a Bama play because he's got such good speed, and that's when this guy looks so good in the pocket. Oh, is this one off. Bradley waits for blockers and. Now flag gets dropped at the very end of the play, about the 42. More of that running east and west against Blunt, which you would not think is advisable, but some of those big guys up front, they're trying to get them a little winded. Yeah, you're not going to beat them to the edge off. Just to make a mistake. Go underneath the block and think this would be a hold here. And it is. Right off this, 10 yard penalty, still third down. So now we're third and long coming up here. For the Trojans that are all the way back up to the 46 yard line. Third and 17. Now we got play clock, or this is down in distance. Parker says second down again and just able to get that one off. Wow, what a play. Joseph yeah. Leverett was all over battle, but battle able to get it close enough to Bradley to avoid the intentional grounding. And avoid the 10 yard loss. Yeah. Man, what yeah. a play by that quarterback. Because he was wrapped up almost immediately. Well, that's one of those plays that they say you won't see in the box score. You're right. Some hidden yardage. Or highlights. But there is a flag. and It's considered a low life, but it's truly a high, high life. We've got plenty of uh, flags tonight. Wow. <laughs> Automatic first down on the defensive holding call. Whew. But boy, you know, you, so that's that's a downfield call, and you got a quarterback who's scrambling way back and has no chance to get anything off. They must Ooh. have held quick. Yes. <laughs> now they didn't give him the first down. No, they, no oh. first down. Oh. Okay. So now second and seven. Battle gets away from Hunter. Now he pulls it down, and Battle just got tripped up. And now a flag comes in at the end of the play. And this one, he had the first down. Battle and Lee Hunter making some good decisions. What are you gonna call tripping on Daphne? I, I mentioned. I mean on Blunt, but I didn't think the, uh, the Blunt defender made the play. Of They're them. marking it off against Blunt, a 15-yarder. Yes, against defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. I thought if he if he was tripped, it was by his own man. I thought. Daphne all the way up to the 22 here. Again, their offense hasn't scored. It was a 
special teams errant snap that they took in. Pitch to Bradley. Miles with the block to seal the edge, and then he cut it back to the inside. And work hard to get a few there. Good job by Miles not to get a holding call on the edge, because you certainly see that a lot with those receivers out there, Vic Lockett. Yep, and good defense there, stringing it out. Gain of just two. Everybody making good fits. It's big Lee Hunter there. 65305. Talking about good fits. He just fit. <laughs> Wherever he wants to. Fits plural sometimes. <laughs> Plugs multiple holes. Give Williams trying to get to the outside and a handful of jersey will bring him down. Cameron Johnson had him there. Third down coming up here for the Trojans. Nice job by Cameron there. So now you now you start to start to think a little bit here. Okay, so what if we don't get it? We've missed two field goals from similar ranges tonight. You're down by eight. Defense is playing better for Daphne. Yes. And a lot of that might have to do with the injury to Williams, the running back for Blunt. All right. Third. As well as the penalties against him. About six. Battle. Looking for the end zone wide open. He's got a touchdown. Battle throws it up in the corner, but we've got a flag as Davis Oliver snuck out to the back foot. He's a linebacker. We saw him playing some H-back tonight. And flag on the play, but the way Daphne is responding, this one's going to go against Blunt. And now you go for two here. To uh, I, don't, I don't see the flag. Uh, it looked like uh, our referee is setting up to call anything. So it's 15-13 now. So timeout, Daphne. Daphne's going to take the timeout. I didn't see a flag either. We got statistician said there's a flag. The truck said there was a flag in my headset, but I didn't see. Touchdown. Oliver there, and so he doesn't, he comes in as that Kind of blocking back, H-back, tight end, and almost like if you're scouting him, the last guy you think is going to get the ball. Right. <laughs> battle with the throw, but again, battle, poise. Bought some time in the pocket, kept his eyes downfield, yeah, and now. I think he had a plan, too, because all that speed, and that's what everybody on Blunt is concentrating on. And here you get the linebacker from defense sneaking across the field like a tight end often does, you know, yep. across the formation. And that's got to feel good. He's also the, the punter who had that bad snap that he went up and got, and his knee went down yep. Yep. and gave Blunt the excellent field position. So Daphne takes a timeout and says, all right, hey, we've got a lot of time left here, but this is a big two-point conversion. We can get this game tied. Well, I thought they were going to kick the extra point, and that's why I was just sitting here thinking, you know, the way the game's shaping up, these timeouts can be very precious. But what's, On an extra point, what do we But what's the sort of if you, if you If you make the extra point, you're down by one. If you miss... The P8, the two point, you're down by two. No, no difference yeah, between yeah. being down by you're, one or two. So go away from yeah, getting right. up on top either way. So they're going to go for it here. Yep. Well, if it's just that way, I think I would go for the more probable, just to keep the confidence high. But I'm just saying, what? If you're down one or two, what's the difference? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think I would do the more probable thing. Yeah. All right. So battle. Fakes it to Williams. Fight. And incomplete as he tried to go back to Oliver. And there was some pressure in the passing lane, and Oliver was short, and the ball was a little short as well. So Blunt holds on to the lead, but Daphne has scored 13 unanswered, and they're within two. They need a win to get to the playoffs, and this touchdown got him back closer. You see our score 15 13. Blunt was up 15 0 at the half. Daphne's battled back. Speaking of close games, how about in overtime? Right now, Fairhope leads McGill 20 17. Fairhope kicked the field goal. McGill getting the ball back at the 10. McGill trying to end the perfect season. Uh, Fairhope trying to end the perfect season of McGill. How about that drive? Big, big, big. Drive for Daphne there, eight plays, 59 yards, 244. And a low line drive kick. 
Jordan Harris Mitchell with it for the Leopards. Changes directions at the 25 and gets out to the 35. Well, at this point now, Jim and Vic, any mistakes are really going to be magnified. The game's down to a two point margin. The field is slick. The ball's a little slick. The pressure's on. Blunt missing their. They're trying to avoid putting yeah. the pads up. Yeah. yeah. With and nine minutes left. And right. Blunt, Blunt missing their biggest weapon offensively. Yep. Behind quarterback Lamarcus Brown. It's right. Jarris Williams. Get a little creative offensively. Yep. I thought, you know, I thought the offensive line was blocking very well in the first half. Not so much here in the second half. So let's find that diamond kid. Savon Davis Jones will stay in the backfield and Diamond lines up just on the left side and give it off and Daphne's line shuts it down on the left side. Game maybe he got a yard now. At the most and yeah, if they could get one of those, a couple of those slants going. I think that is what I would try to work. I was calling plays for Blunt. And this, I think Blunt's offense had 148 yards in the first quarter in this game, and they were. And much of that is the uh, running back. Yeah, moving it all Old over. number 99. Yeah. Or new old, number 99. Yeah, old last week, 99 three, but he's <laughs> on the sidelines with a, with a bad thumb now. Parnell, oh, man. There we go with those penalties. Yeah, that was Parnell was actually. Completely off schedule. Yeah, Parnell started the, the receiver. He started to move. Start offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And the lineman out of the corner of his eye sees the receiver moving and says, well, he thinks the ball's moving. Yeah, here we go. I'm late. Metro Let by me T get in it. Metro by T-Mobile flag. Switch to Metro right now for the best deal in wireless. And second and 14. Here for the Leopards. Uh, a whistle here is got an echo of whistles. Yeah, there was, we did not see a flag. No, I think there's just some corrective actions by the ref. They've got to be on the same page. We've got a lot of numbers up by the line of scrimmage defensively, Vic, and only one safety in the <laughs> middle of the field back, and that just keeps Good catch, observation. catching my attention. You do not want to do that against yeah. the Leopards. And it's been that way a whole bunch of the second half. Yeah, it has, it? and, and uh, whether they, that was the first half formation, I don't want to call it being that, but a quick slant. Second and 14. Brown looking to the near sidelines, and it's broken up as he was trying to come over for Parnell and quickly coming over to help close on that one, Jordan Powell. Yeah, single safety's got a lot of a lot of range because that was him. And he was in the dead middle of the field and that one was broken up. I thought the receiver got his hand on it, just didn't collect it. He yep. put that one hand up there. It was a great throw. Yeah. And now third Hit and- Hit it right in there in that gap in that hole. If you think we had a lot of penalties combined, we have had 23 penalties. That's why we thought it was a lot. Yeah, that's Th why. Third and 14. About 180 yards. Not good ball. Play clock barely got it off. Brown steps up, drives to the near side, but going to be well short again of the first down. And hold your breath, Leopards fans. Another punt is coming up here. The snap yeah. was good on the last one. Yeah, the snap and the punt. And a chance to maybe flip the field, but you have to do that with execution. Before we get out of here, this one last time, got to say hello to Miss Millie Fritz. I know she's tuning in. I love it. Love because, it, love it, love it. Uh, Blunt is where all of her kids, I think, graduated. I wish she could watch us in the playoffs like next week. <laughs> so does she. Yes, so, she does. All right. Decision in Montgomery breaking a poor woman's heart. That's right. <laughs> all right, good snap. Smith. This one not as good a kick. High. We'll see what kind of hop it takes. And okay, 29. That's almost a flip of the field considering yep. what could have been, right? All right. So we want to tell you about some of our great scholastic athletes. Kelsey Braggs, a senior, plays on the volleyball team. 3.2 GPA. See everything she's involved with there. And she's going to go to Southern University and study nursing. So good work there by Kelsey. 
from the Blunt Leopards. And Ethan Rowe, senior great cross country runner, swimming tennis, National Honor Society, top 15 in the state, three-time county and sectional champion. As now Battle wants to go up top, hangs this one high in the air, and he's got it complete inside the 24-yard line to Malik McLean. Well, that'll flip the field. Yeah, absolutely, McLean there just high-pointed the football as a receiver. Amani again in phase with him, but this time the receiver says, nope, you're not getting it. Kind of shielding him out with his body. Yeah. Good, good play. Yeah. 50 yards through the air. Yeah, Diamond was pretty comfortable. Never felt like he was really beat, but the ball was so perfectly thrown. And I think the height advantage in the it good helped. job by the body. Mm -hmm. Block out. Didn't have any much chance to make the play. Battle on the keeper, still on his feet, and he's in for the Daphne touchdown. You know, a lot of these fans have exited, but they have missed a great comeback by these Trojans. Not if they're watching TV. <laughs> you think they got home and turned it, tuned yeah. into us? Yeah. 19 straight points by the Daphne Trojans. And a game this, this, this game, you go back about 12 minutes, and Blunt was going in to look like eliminate the Daphne Trojans from the playoffs. Wow, how about battle sells the fake? And also this blunt defense suddenly finds itself, they've been on the field a lot yeah. in the yeah, second yeah. half. There's yeah. some bad, bad tackling there. And oh, I love that play call though. Love that, that play call for battle. His 10th rushing touchdown of the year. Well, he sold the fake so long, yep. it, it, you know, it almost got me. It got, it might have even got a camera guy. It was, so, <laughs> it was so good. I know there's some folks in the stand and now they'll go, Sands will go for two again. But we oh, get man. a penalty play football game. Delay a game. And that one's probably just Coaching decided to go well. everything over there trying to figure out what they're going to do. Huh? Yeah, decide to go for two. Oh, still Delay excited. Game. By the offense. Five yard penalty. So, so that one's on the entire Daphne High School. Yeah, Blunt, <laughs> Blunt has missed a, an extra point. They've got a safety and they've made an extra point. That's why we're at the 19 15 score and they'll continue to go for two. Battle. Gave it off to Bradley. Bradley looking for some blockers. Cuts to the outside and then nowhere to go. Is yeah, he was harassed immediately by Big Lee Hunter. Yeah, so now. Made it look like he had to go around the block. So Blunt finds themselves now back. A touchdown would put him back on top. But how about the Trojans looking to make it 22 straight appearances in the postseason. And now they got a chance up by four here in the fourth. Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Booz in the sidelines. Kenny King and his team has railed off 19 straight here in the second half. This was 15-0 at the half and looking like more were forthcoming for the Leopards as they were looking like they were going to take this one in. Then a tip yeah. ball at the line, an interception by Daphne. Kind of a risky call offensively. First and goal inside the five. And Jordan Harris Mitchell has trouble with that one at the 10. Now he makes a move and up the middle of the field and pulled down across the 25-yard line. So we've got some great high school football going on tonight, not just here. Sarah Land comes back to beat Spanish Fort 17-16. Second OT, now McGill is on top of Fairhope 27-20. So it was 17-17 at the end. Each team kicks a field goal. McGill got it first, and now they lead. 27-20 here, just two plays, the big 50-yard pass play keyed that one from battle to Malik McLean, and then battle sells the fake, goes on the keeper and scores the touchdown. And Daphne finds themselves with a lead for the first time tonight. Quick on the far side, Armani Diamond with the catch, and he's going to get about eight on first down there. And you know, it's great to see the last six minutes is no more Metro by T-Mobile flags, and just let just let the 22 on the field yeah. decide this one, right? T-Mobile's gotten their money's worth tonight. Yeah, <laughs> every week it seems like. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and you're glad to have them too. Yes, yeah. officials Don don't want to throw the flag. Right, you know, that's the that's the other thing. It's like you know they they would rather not throw penalty flags. And how about the effort given by Diamond today? Who's both you know, ways? Yeah, yep. 
A lot of snaps both ways. They got enough for the first down. Forward progress got him there quickly. Cameron Grays to the near sideline, and he stood up there at about the 45, but they'll say he was forward progress was stopped inbounds. The clock will run. Still a lot of time. Oh, no so doubt. And, and I, I kind of like what Blunt's doing here with real quick releases. So I agree. Not get I a agree. Big, instead of those balls. Not going to get a big loss and he might break one. Keep the backfield empty. Again, Jarius Williams out with a thumb injury. Yeah, and then uh, false start Marty here against, Diamond, I think. against the Leopards. Boy, it just you get that first and 15, and it just, it just changes so many. Changes up your play callers thinking. It changes up your rhythm. Check that. That's uh, Cameron Gray's, I think, jump. So that was a second and four. Is now yep. second and nine. Yep. Uh, my mistake. I thought that was on first down. It was on second. Thanks, Danny Boyd. So second and nine is Dan said. It's slipping down. It was Parnell up there. So now you're third and nine. Still could get some runs in. And now look who's coming in on, onto the field. Look at our penalties there, 25 and 183 yards. But now more important than the penalty is number three is back on the field. Put him in the slot. Boy, wait, but is it more tough to catch the ball with yeah. a bad thumb? I, I don't, no, you've got to get a hand off. I, I was going to say, I don't think they could throw it to him now. Third and nine. Brown looking, floats it off on the far side, complete, making a move and making a miss is Melvin Williams, and he's going to have the Leopard first down right at midfield. Well, give Williams a lot of credit. Ooh. I don't know if he was so aware or or whatever reason. He just gets Quinelli miss. He's just playing football. He's But he's getting, he got a first down. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, he didn't mess around and yeah. try to check avoid too many people. He just wanted to get to the sticks. Once he got the hand on Jackson Manning to push him off, he Got the first down up here near midfield with five minutes left, potentially. But Blunt wins, five minutes left in the Daphne season. Brown going to pull it down, and he'll get six on first down. You know, one, if you want to call it an advantage being down late in the game, is you are what normally would be three downs is now four downs. You're, you're going to go for it on fourth down regardless. Sure, sure. And, and you also see some. You don't many, want to be in this predicament, but yeah. Yeah, I and mean, you can call plays accordingly. You yeah. know, like here on second down, if you want to try a run here, well, you got three more downs to get the five yards, right? Yeah, well, I thought you were going to say it looks like whoever has the ball last and don't complete a penalty who should win the game. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Motion goes Harris Mitchell. That's what I do. He puts this off. Jarris Williams back in the game for the first time. Yeah, he, he should get his touches here. Yep, back on this drive. He, he'd been out most of the second half with a bad thumb, and he gets the first down up to the 35-yard line. And yeah, he's they're not bringing him out there to have him be a decoy. I agree. I, I would not, at least. It's just, you can see that heavily bandaged. And I think they were going to actually try to throw to him the previous play. Yeah. It just wasn't there, and the quarterback said, okay, let me just get all I can get, Boy, which but was a good decision. It's a good decision to get him the ball. Period. Absolutely. I'd do it from the press box. First and ten, and he comes in motion, and now he's tight. The top of your screen. Brown, delayed quarterback draw, wants to bounce it to the outside. Trying to get around the corner. Oh, Great look job. Look at Daphne's defense yeah. there running down. Great job. That was some speed I did not expect out of the Trojans. Yeah, that was Powell coming up from his corner spot to blow that one up. Because when he pulled it out here, it was like, this could be big for the Leopards. Yeah, the safety as well. Great job by Reynolds. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'll tell you what. Great That's awareness. Great hustle. Yeah, he tried to sneak out the back door, and they slammed it shut. Got one. On first down here for the Leopards is now down to three minutes to go. Brown fires incomplete and covers there. Manning and dropped back and covers the linebacker. And Reynolds was there, the safety as well. And third and nine, and obvious four down territory here for the yeah, Leopards. And I really do think even you know you could you could run a trap, you can run a misdirection. 
with uh, Williams, don't you think, Vic? Absolutely. I mean, you got two downs to get nine yards. He's an explosive player. Best player on offense. Got two runs of almost 50 each tonight. Probably both teams. Brown, empty backfield. Steps up in the pocket. Looks downfield still. Now he crosses the line of scrimmage, and he's going to be driven out of bounds about the 32-yard line. So fourth down coming up here for the Leopards. Holly's like, how much of this can I take? Uh, Last week against Sarah Land, really a tough loss. Good thing he's a young man, good strong heart, good man. Fourth and six here for Blunt. They do have two timeouts remaining. Play clock, lots of time left still. Just getting down to five. Brown steps up. Fires far side. He's got it complete inside the 20 for a first down. Armani Diamond. Coming in here shining what? at a big moment. Ooh, what a delivery here from Brown. Watch him climb the pocket a bit. Boy, talk about climbing. How about Diamond and then holding on to the ball after elevating like that on a fourth down? Yeah, Coach Holly says he's a dude, and he yeah. reaffirmed it there. Yeah, he's, he did. He's free. He's okay and nothing serious. And he's saying, give me a hand well, up. Yeah. I'm ready to roll. When you go up that high to catch the ball, it's a long way down. Long too, way down with a collision involved yeah your, your legs aren't underneath you watch our Alabama watch power replay concentration again. talent call it what you want all of the above yeah it just came down awkward yeah, he got clipped by the safety there and I imagine on Sunday they would have said he didn't complete the pass reception was there some question to that <laughs> yeah I thought he kind of dropped it going to the ground but not on this level okay Completed pass, moved the sticks, first down blow. 2.36 on the clock. It's going to be an incredible finish one way or the other, guys. It's going to be either a defensive or an offensive explosion, right? One needs a touchdown. Season on the line for both teams. Brown. Wants to keep it in his hands, trying to get to the outside. Cuts it back inside. He's wrapped up there, John Davis, with a stop. No need to be in a big hurry here. And if you're Daffy, you start thinking, okay, so get a stop here. Do you think about a timeout? Just thinking, okay, if something happens, we've got to give our, our offense some more time. That's a real juggle right there. What do you mm -hmm. do? Apparently they've got their blocking screens and it's just up to the receivers and backs to do what they got to do. Second and five here as we approach 90 seconds left and potentially the season for one of these teams. Brown right up the middle, still on his feet and Brown dives in. Did he get in before his knee went down there? He's in it. They're saying the he touchdown. did, but it did look close. Oh, I agree yeah. with you. So Marcus Brown after 19 straight by Daphne. He's feeling it now. Okay, now this this a big PAT here because they're up by two and a chance to make it three. Watch Brown. Yeah, right there, looks short. Dives for it. He's over. Mm, yeah, I think, he's, I think he's in for the touchdown. Yeah, but I think when he was on his knee, yes, it was hell there. I think his knee short. Yeah, I think his knee, I don't think it went down. It looked like you saw his hip come down first. Anyway, it's good and blunts up here. And the PAT is no good. So it's 21-19. That could be huge. And the second. That is got the, 127 to find out. Yeah, that is the second PAT missed by Blunt tonight. Daphne's missed two field goals in this game. And how about that drive by the junior quarterback, LaMarcus Brown, and a lot of it. Imagine him next year. <laughs> and, and so, hey, Vic Lockett. Okay, Jared Kihas in the truck says, look at that. Well, yeah, he is, is his he hip. is down. Yeah. yeah. When, I didn't it, think that was a hip. I thought that was a knee. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he would be short. And what's crazy thing is he doesn't have a reason to dive there. He's That's got, the other thing. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. When it thing. happened live, I thought his knee was down, and then I watched the replay. I'm like, well, maybe it's not that. Hey, you know, that might have been a break for Daphne. That Go ahead and get the score quick and yeah. give him a chance uh, to get the good. offense. You know, you put that ball at the half-yard line and you run off 30 more yep. seconds. Or more, yeah, you're right. 
So now Daphne down by two. But Dano, I tell you what, boy, you sure look, you sure look at the bright side of things <laughs> after disaster. So, so, so one Blunt does not. They don't kick it deep. So you know Daphne is. These have been short kicks that have been coming to around the thirty or so. And Daphne's kicker Corey Bonner has a strong leg. The two he's missed. 37 and 38, I believe. 11 plays. Look at that. 72 yards, five minutes off the clock. Clutch drive. Yep. This one goes deeper and is taken by Bradley around the 20. And Bradley is covering up that football. He's out across the 35 to the 37. All right. So we just watched one junior quarterback lead his team down the field in a pressure pack situation to. You go about, the lead. about 40 yards, and you're you're within range. You're back at the 37, 38 yard field goal range for a kicker who we know can make it from there. Yep. Again, so if you're just joining us, Daphne, you missed something. Yeah, you missed a lot. <laughs> Daphne needs a win to extend it to 22 straight trips to the playoffs. Blunt with a win there, obviously, and if they lose with. Spanish Fort losing tonight. Blunt has the tiebreaker, and we get a whistle before this one. Blunt was trying to run some extra players off the field, and I think the Leopards, they took a timeout. Okay. And they do have a timeout, apparently. Yep. <laughs> Still have one more, we believe. We believe. So, yeah, we're, we're <laughs> trying to figure this out. So, you had four teams vying for two spots, and... St. Paul's was comfortably ahead of Robertsdale. If they won, they were in the playoffs. So that would then leave one spot for three teams. Spanish Fort lost. If Daphne loses, Spanish Fort holds the tiebreaker over Daphne. If Blunt loses, Blunt has the tiebreaker because they beat Spanish Fort. Daphne has to win. They, they can't get in without a win here tonight. And I think... Talk having, about being a mathematician. Well, <laughs> but, you know, I think having four spots available for two teams on the last night of the season just says how tough this region is. Yeah. Well, Six, when you start counting above three, I've got problems, Jim. <laughs> I, I, I think we have that. Uh, I will not be visiting you at tax time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Trent Battle. Tyler Bradley in the back. You can still run the ball here. Battle, quick to the near side. He's got Nick McLean, and he steps out of bounds up near the 45. McLean had the big 50-yard catch earlier in this one. He's a big target downfield. One of the big plays of the game. Yep. Made by uh, Battle to McLean. Do you dare have him do a uh, up and out? Go. He's so lengthy, uh, lanky on the outside. Did such a good job using his body on that other long pass. Yep. These corners biting up on the on the jump routes. Up seven on first down now. Right back to him, and they come in. Steps out of bounds at the 49, so a first down. Okay, got it in his head now. He's just going to go short. Well, let's see here again. When you consider a field goal in the mix, they got the first 10 of the prescribed 35 that I was yeah. – uh, theorizing about pretty quickly in about six seconds. Blunt looked like they had a bit of confusion on personnel there, but they get everyone off. Battle in the pocket, heaves this one up, and oh, an incomplete. And that was a good job, actually, by McLean to cut in front there to look like that one had a chance to be picked off. Pocket kind of closed in quickly on Battle here, and watch McLean as he makes a little move and then cuts it inside to... Yeah, try to, but look who's on defense oh. back there, too. It's all hands on deck. Cameron Gray is the wide receiver. Uh, he's single coverage here, second and 10. 62 seconds left. Battle pressure coming. Set up a screen, get it out of the backfield to Bradley. Bradley breaks a tackle and another. He's got a first down and more, and Bradley inside the Leopard 30. A lot of fighting these Trojans. 21 yards. Watch the great individual effort by Bradley here. Watch the broken tackles. There's one from Booker. Gets away from another arm tackle there. Wow. A lot of heart, a lot of strong 
How about Battle Lower looking body. the opposite way and coming back to the other side with the screen? Play, or game clock now down to 45. Battle zips it, nearly intercepted, and it is! Picked off on the near side. Jordan Reed still on his feet, looking for a block. Still going into the end zone for the pick six dagger. Yes, that will do it. Just the second interception thrown by Battle this year. At the worst time. And Jordan Reed has his fourth pick of the year, and not only a pick, he finishes it. Explanation point on the game. Uh, you talk about being at a good football game where everything's on the line. Talking about putting the pads up. Blunt kept fighting despite all the self-inflicted wounds. They come up with the big play at the end of the game. He jumped the route yep. on Johnson. And they take it to pay dirt. Had safety help behind him. Boy, battle struggling. Looks like he came up a little lame after the uh, throw, like a hamstring or something like that. And Reed, he was totally out of gas when he got to the goal line there. Yeah, a lot of good effort by that young man. I'm trying to think if we've had a better game this year. Wow. I don't think so. We capped it off tonight, huh? Man. Get you excited for next year on UTV 44. After this game, I assume Jim will sail on down to the Keys and he won't come back till the weather warms First back of all, up. If you see him in a sailboat, something has gone horrible. Well, when wrong. I say sail, yeah, you okay. know, you just take a, you, know, you turn the engine that. down uh, low and just kind of cruise Putter. down there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if that was an option, Big Locket, it would happen. But here we go, 27 19. So they'll try the PAT again. After the pick six. And that one. Slips through. Is through, and it's 28-19. Back and forth. He's feeling good. Yeah, 15 unanswered by Blunt in the first half, 19 unanswered by Daphne in the second half, and then 13 now unanswered by Blunt to make it 28-19. I mean, this – this certainly felt like a playoff game. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Yeah, well, you could tell in the minds of the teams, it definitely was, yeah. huh, Dan? The intensity, yep. the talent, yep. the resilience. And, and that and young man there, too, the pregame, I don't know about you guys, I saw a bit of sense of urgency in him that I hadn't seen before. Oh, and, and Looks led. like he was more involved yeah. pregame and making sure things go the way he wanted it in preparation for the game here tonight. Well, he, no stone unturned. He's always got this entire squad's full attention. Yep, his thumbs on this program. You hear him use the word culture a lot, and some people you know, kind of casually will throw that, oh, we need to change the culture. It, Lev, Holly, Lev Holly has got the culture where he wants it with the Blunt Leopards. Hey, congratulations to McGill Tulin. Oh, wow. 27-20 win in double overtime to beat Fair Hope, so they Go 10 and 0 on the year. Tim the Carter's guys, fair hope he knows some ball. Yeah, Tim Carter's team still in the playoffs, though, right? Yeah, but a great effort on the road over there. As Bryson Cleveland to the 30, and uh, 21 seconds left here, and you get a good look up at the. Booth, Dan Brennan, Jim Cox. Lean a little bit, Victor. Lean a little bit. Come on this way a little bit. Come that on way, little, this oh, way. Okay. Yeah. Here I am. Status Sharp. <laughs> yeah. Statistician David Sharp. We talk about so often. The fans may think I'm doing this from the house and on the phone. <laughs> you know, Today's you can, technology. You, you can, can remote it in. It can longer. happen. Uh, do it from New York like they do. There's Raymond Wilson. Look at that. No gloves on. He's tough. He's, he's a dude. He's <laughs> tough with no gloves on. All right. Battle, rolling out, dumps it out of the backfield to Williams, who steps out of, the, out of bounds. Carry on Chastang. I thought he, had like, a, for the I thought he had like a cape on left over from a Halloween party. Uh, it was just a, a multiple jackets we need here well, tonight. Any accessory on a night like this. He is up high on the scaffolding down in the Don't have to worry North about any of the blunt kicks hitting me. <laughs> <laughs> they barely get there. There's Rodney Middlebrooks right up on top of us. 
He had two hoods on earlier tonight, decided to go with one, is now battle, fires it up and tipped an incomplete with six seconds left again. We can't say enough for our Thomas McDonald up there. I promise he's 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 there with the face mask gloves and everything else. Double duties guarding my sandwich. The man, Van Yukai the legend, the, the sidelines, the short guy, Van Yukai. Yeah. Nobel Van Yukai, huh? Man. He'll take a lick and keep on I can't, can't, filming. Yeah, I can't say enough for our crew. They give you these great pictures. Daniel Hicks, our red hat, and also running the parabolic mic down there to get all those great sounds. And occasionally, some you maybe you didn't want to hear coming maybe from you the, don't uh, want the kids from a hear. coach or two on the sidelines. <laughs> But again, our hats off to our great crew as this will wrap up our coverage here tonight as Battle fires that one and able to get it complete and a tackle at the end of the game. And that'll do it as the clock runs out. Let's make sure they didn't throw a flag on that. I thought way. they Wood would too. More, that would have been yeah, but there's nothing you can do. Apple so Poe, though, the way this game is going. All right, but what a win for Halev Holly and the Blunt Leopards, eight and two on the year. Come on the road and. Not an easy place to play. Punch their playoff ticket after a disappointing year last year in which they went 5-5 five and five and didn't go to the playoffs. And this year they come back, and those two men have lots of respect for each other. And we talked about it in our pregame show. They were talking about it on the air, about yeah. how good of friends they've become. Well, we, we saw them in midfield before the game, too. And when they got together, we generally chit-chat, but we saw it was really a moment where they wanted to just kind of hang out together a little bit, and we gave them their space. And this is one of those – if you were to write the script, you would never write a script like this if you were a coach for a game to go like this. But as a viewer or as guys up in the press yeah. box, this thing was yep. highly entertaining. A lot of flows sure. going back and forth and a lot of talent on the field, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and just even more, I mean, if you're Daphne, you, you hate this. Your playoff streak has been snapped, and the loss tonight puts Spanish Fort in the playoffs. Wow. With the, it came down to the tiebreaker of that game that was played earlier in the season that Daphne won but then had to forfeit because of an ineligible player. And so head-to-head -head tiebreaker, I believe that's how it shakes out. But the head-to-head -head tiebreaker results in a win for Spanish Fort into the playoffs, and Daphne goes home for the first time since 1997 without going to the postseason. And a bit of a surprise that uh, Spanish Fort was able to give Sarah Land everything that they wanted about four miles up the road. Uh, what a... What a game we were treated to here tonight. And Aside from the penalties, the kids play very hard, and uh, you don't want that being a part of the game, but it certainly reared his head many, many times here tonight, a lot more than you want it to. So good by the players, you know, shaking each other's hand, the camaraderie, sportsmanship. You know, they left it on the field, I can't say. Uh, without a doubt, yeah, they did. everything was left on the field. Yeah, I'm with you. What a great game here tonight. And you feel bad for the Daphne kids not going to the playoffs, but you're awfully excited for Lev Holly and the Leopards going on to the postseason starting next week, Amanda. That's right, Jim. I am really extremely excited for Coach Holly, and I know how much this game meant to him and Coach King. A very huge game here, tough battle. Now, your defense finished it off with an interception. So tell me, what what, what are you feeling right now? Man, I'm so proud. We talk about it every every week, every single day, about just character and just not folding under pressure. And we always believe, man, that diamonds are formed under pressure. I am so proud of my guys, the way they fought, the way they just showed their culture. And it's, it's hard to do, man. And, and Daphne gave us everything that they had, and we knew it coming out. But, man, they fought their tails off, man. So I'm proud of them. I'm proud of the fans, the band, and everybody in that community, man. Just laid it. Now, Coach, I can feel your emotions. I can honestly feel the emotions of everybody here on the field tonight. This was a, a huge game. And, you know, you talk about how proud you are of them, even off the field with the community service and the things that they do outside of here. And I know you're also proud of Coach King. I know you guys are really cool. And what he does here for Daphne. So can you speak on Coach King? Because this is a tough game for both of you. I'll tell you what, man. He's a first-class guy, first off. But I tell you what, he's a hell of a ball coach. And there's no doubt he's the right man for this dang on program. I mean, the, the respect factor just went up because it was easy to go down there and fold. But they came out and they gave us their best shot, and we knew it. But at the end of the day, you know, it goes back to the small things. It goes back to the character. It goes back to that brick-by-brick -brick culture that we preach every single day. 
And when you go in these kind of games, man, you got to know that there's going to be some adversity that's going to hit, but you got to be able to stand up and do it with humility, do it with a bunch of pride, and do it with just a bunch of character. So, man, hats off to them on a good year. But, hey, we got to go get ready for the playoffs. That's right. And you talk about adversity, and I know that, you know, as you guys took this victory tonight, you guys are going to, you know, go into some more games. And what do you think that mind frame is going to be as you guys get into the playoff season? It's one game season at this point. And, I mean, I think we played for it. So we didn't win the region, but I think our goals are still intact. So we got to take, take them one game at a time. But we're going to enjoy this one for the next couple of days. But come Sunday, we'll get back in and get back to work. All right, Coach, Coach Holly, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much. Jim, back to you. All right, thanks, Amanda. And, you know, you heard Jerome Woods, the principal at Blunt earlier tonight, say we absolutely have nobody who could be better at leading our program than Lev Holly. And, uh, boy, anybody who deals with Lev just thinks the world of him. And, and he's so right. I mean, Blunt face him at birth. They were down. They were up in this game. Then they were down, and they came, they came back. We'll talk more about that in uh, just a second. But, uh, well, congratulations to the Leopards. So, all year long, if you've been following us, we've been uh, having our peanut butter and jelly blitz. Uh, thanks to Sonovas Bank and our fantastic local schools, we've been collecting peanut butter and jelly for feeding the Gulf Coast over the season. Uh, over five tons of donations. want to congratulate UMS Wright for being the season champion. In just one week, they collected over a ton of peanut butter and jelly, and so they're going to get a nice award. They're also going to get a check from $1,250 from the folks at Sonovas Bank. UMS is then turning right around and donating that to St. Jude. Nice. So hats off to the entire mm -hmm. UMS Very community. But uh, the real winners, everybody in the Gulf Coast. Um, so uh, our 11-week total, we ended up with enough peanut butter and jelly to feed over 70,000 meals wow. through high school football on Friday nights. And we can't thank our friends at Sonovas Bank. Uh, it's when they, you know, they say they're the bank of here. They really mean it. You see it through these actions here. And, of course, feeding the Gulf Coast, they're the ones that – take all the donations, and then they put them to work in our community, which is so desperately needed. So uh, I, I thought it was really something great we added to the broadcast this year, and yep. uh, thanks to all the schools who did who who did this uh, and were able to raise, uh, collect all that food. Really, really, really great. So thanks to Novus and Feeding the Gulf Coast. And uh, let's go down to uh, Amanda. She's got Jordan Reed down there who That's had the right. pick six at the end of the game. He definitely did. I'm here with Jordan Reed, safety. And now, you know, we have to talk about that interception, that winning interception that you just did here on the field that helped your team go to the playoffs. So let's talk about how you were feeling and what was going through your mind. Well, the drive before, our offense had scored. We told them they scored, they get the touchdown, we're going to make the stop for them. I told them, we y'all make this touchdown, we're going to put y'all on y'all bet and y'all can trust us. And now, as a senior, how important is this moment for you? It's very important. You know, my, ever since my freshman year, we haven't beat Daphne, so it's a very special moment. I told all the seniors, we're 0-3 versus Daphne. So let's go out with a bang. Let's get the first win in, like, four years. Thank you. <laughs> and go out with a bang is exactly what you did now. Coach Holly speaks so highly of you all. Now, what does it mean you as a player to have him as a coach? It means a lot. You know, uh, Coach Holly is more than just a football coach. He's a father figure to me. You know, he puts us up to be great man inside and outside of school. Thank you so much, and congratulations. Celebrate that victory tonight. Thank you. Of course, Jim, back to you. All right. Thanks, Amanda. Great job all year long. I, I think that said it all when he said he's – Coach Holly's more than a coach. He's a father figure to me, and Lev Holly has to be a father figure to a lot of young men, and, boy, what a – just so proud of him and what the Leopards have done tonight. It's a very proud program. I mean, you guys really, really don't know the scope of it. I mean, these guys over there, the alumni, the teachers, you know, the entire faculty, the yeah. coaching staff, mm -hmm. you know, it starts at the top, and it works it ways, It works down that way. And Coach Holly, you know, he's done a great job with these young men. He's still molding them, and he doesn't have them where he wants them to, but he's just a work in progress, and he's working. Well, and it's a fresh – you know, group crop every year. Mm -hmm. You got new ones coming in and, uh, and, and others leaving. But I go back to the story. The first time I met Le Liv, Hobby, I Le Liv Holly, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know how to identify him. And when I walked into the school, he was addressing some of the, the, the team and, and, and they were seated in the bleachers and all the eyes were on this one guy. <laughs> and I said, that's Liv Holly. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, because somebody that was that clearly in charge and uh, uh, he here his team played awfully well to win this game tonight. Boy, and uh, you do hate it for both. Uh, you hate it for Daphne. Yep. Both of these teams loaded with juniors. We're, yep. we're, we're going to be back here next year watching Talent both of these laden. teams. So, yes. uh, again, we've talked so much about our, our great crew here, uh, the folks that are here on site, all the work that goes on in the station, all the work 
leading up to the game during the uh, during the week to get everything taken care of, and it's all headed up by Jared Kihas, who uh, loves high school football and putting it on TV more than uh, anybody oh. down here. He's the best. Well, the preparation he does and the it, whole crew, it's, it's amazing. Unbelievable. We show up here, they make us look uh, really good. So our player of the game nominees, LaMarcus Brown, Jarris Williams, and Trent Battle, go to utb44.com and vote. Not and, a bad choice. Wow, three uh, great players there, three juniors that we'll be talking about next year uh, as well. So uh, this is the uh, unfortunate part. We don't get to continue on telling the great story that we do all year because the decision is made that you can't do high school football live in the playoffs in the state of Alabama for some reason that none of us understand. A lot of states do it. 28-19, the final score. Blunt goes to the playoffs. Daphne misses it for the first time in 22 years. So for the Final time of the 2019 season for Jim Cox, Dan Brennan, Vic Lockett, Amanda Boos on the sidelines. I'm Jim Cox saying good night from Daphne where the Leopards finish 8-2 and, and they're going to the postseason.